the first time I've seen Eddie swinging anybody on the show. What did you do? I just turned on. But no, I turned his headphones up. Blaring. Did you turn his up? I was trying to turn mine up. Oh. I reached over and hit the wrong thing. It's like he couldn't decide to pull the headphones off because they're too loud or take a swipe at it. <laughs> he just kind of did both. You couldn't fit in the other room, Dan. He just kind of went. <laughs> <laughs> well, all those knobs are out of sight and hard to see. They're, for some reason, they decided to put them all underneath the console. I just, I just can't wait for a new play. It would have been fun to see Eddie knock J.D. out. He's holding. I dodged. Because I kept playing with it going, that's not changing my volume. I wonder what. Oh. <laughs> Alright. So where'd you see the dead body? At the I guess I can see the name of the hotel. Hearthside Inn, right over here by the radio station. Where's that on it's just on the it's just on the other side of Coit Road. On Coit? It's it's kind of in the middle of a little complex area back there. What was somebody doing dead there? Uh apparently it looked like a drug deal gone bad. One of them was in ambulance. Did you use your uh, media badge? Yeah. Yeah. The, the great big play school one? Yeah, the, the one, one they, that you made yourself? The one they could see. What do you mean the one they could see? They could see it. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, they worked. Uh, well, the, using that philosophy, still, I could take my driver's license and make it this big yeah. and hold it up to a cop and go, but, here, obviously it's real because you can see it. I think it's, Your media badge like is it. three times the size it's supposed to be. I like it. Anyway. It's the play school media badge. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. It works. <laughs> <laughs> it works, but the cops wouldn't let me. Crime scene people were there. I just said, what's going on there? Did a cop look at your badge and, and say, he didn't yeah. question it? No, right. of course not. No, okay. But the fire department guys told me. They were nice. They were listening to the show. They go, J.D. Ryan, ain't you? And? And uh, they just said it was a drug. Did they fight. make that retarded face and yeah, they point did. the finger? Actually, they did. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so they said what? They said, you're J.D. Ryan. And I used to watch you guys on TV all no, the time. No, they said, what about what happened? And they liked the TV show. Oh, uh, they said to them, it looked like a drug deal gone bad. They didn't know anything yet. It had just happened. And one, one dead and one in ambulance on the way mm. to the hospital. Where was the dead body? Up in the room, second floor. You got up that far? Mm -hmm. Well, the cop turned me away. They let you touch it. Mm -hmm. No, they're not going to let you near the crime scene until after the forensics people have been in. Yeah. It was still fresh. Especially you. Well, trample all over the evidence. Hey, you you walk up. on heads, fingers. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, you're dead in a minute. It didn't hurt. Eddie, Eddie, going through his pocket. Eddie's just jealous. I've seen a dead body today, and he hasn't. Not Not as far as I know. <laughs> I don't think that's why Eddie's mad. Is Eddie mad? He probably didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> What's the matter, E? What are you standing all the way back there for? I'm, I'm here now. Oh. Well, that's all right. You can pull up your chair, sit down if you want. No, I'm going to stand up. How come? I've been napping. Is that why your eyes are red? Yes. Mm -hmm. Look up. You didn't have law today? I did, this morning. But Is that where you took <laughs> <laughs> No, that was before the nap. Oh. Uh -huh. I did law, took a nap. Any interesting here. cases? This morning? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. not really. Mm -hmm. Maybe next week. Is the office closed today? How come nobody's up here? Everybody went to the big party thrown by one of the salespeople. So they just shut everything down? Yeah, mm -hmm. to go to a party. So technically, the office is closed. Yes, since no one is here. They even have a temp up front. You know what? That, that's This is another uh, uh, holiday. Day. holiday for us. Another yeah. vacation day. Yeah. She we'll was having a big, a big pool party out on the patio. Everyone was invited. It started at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Which essentially eliminates all on-air staff from being able to go to the park. Well, that's all right. At least for sales. Like I'd have gone anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, would you have gone? Oh, no. Uh -huh. All right, we're good. Bonus. Wink out. This is a another vacation day. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bob left a note in my box that said I needed to fill out my vacation request. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, he mentioned that to me yesterday. Me to police, for us to please fill out our vacation requests. No. I already said, I'm not here the week of July 4th. You fill it out. Mm. You you want him to fill it out or you want me to fill it out? Him. That'd be rude to ask you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't you fill out the vacation report? All you have to do is write down the days that you're not going to be here and sign it. That's it. Figure they'd figure it out by the second or third day. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't fill out the vacation request form, you're not going to get paid for your vacation. Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, if they want to hold me to the letter of my contract, it doesn't say anywhere in there. I got to fill out paperwork to get paid. <laughs> I can confirm that. Yeah, it really doesn't. It doesn't say I have to fill out vacation time. I don't have to do anything. All I got to do is not show up. Well, it's just a matter of signing the form and writing down what dates we're going to be going. I don't care. They use my contract against me because they're using my contract to make... You're being petty. It's going to take all Excuse of me. 10 seconds. Excuse me. What? They're using my contract against me to be able to make those damn bubblehead, bobblehead dolls. Oh, really? Yeah, because it says in my contract they can do whatever they want with my likeness. So they're going to make the bobbles even though you don't want them. Right. But everybody else wants them. I don't care. I don't want one. <laughs> but you have the perfect head for it. Okay, Everett. All right. <laughs> Can I call in sick? <laughs> All right, I'll ask. What does that mean, Everett? <laughs> well, I just mean your features are ideally suited to an oversized skull. Dan, I don't need your help here. <laughs> are you saying my head is too big for my body? I'm not saying that. All I'm what saying... do you say? Why is my head perfect for the bobbleheads? Well, I think that... One moment, please. Eddie Knife. Go ahead, Eddie. <laughs> Damn, that takes you no time to get that out. That's frightening. <laughs> very, very scary, Eddie. What, uh... What, you talking about my big nose? I'm not pointing at any... Pr you're putting words in Possibly my mouth. Possibly my large lips. I'm trying to pay you a compliment. My horse teeth. <laughs> Don't allow your paranoia to overcome you. I'm trying to... My horrendous hairdo? Which is it? I think it's just the totality of the circumstances. And I'm being totally complimentary. I mean, I think that your head is absolutely perfect to have recreated as a bobblehead. I could not think of a better head. I'd just like to stand. Thank you for stepping in the barrel for me. Thank you. <laughs> is there, is there anybody that takes that as a compliment? No. 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 Saying your head is perfect to be a bobblehead is kind of insulting. No, it? it's not insulting at all. Yeah, really no, is. it's yeah, not it meant to be insulting. You just, just made fun of my nose, my hair, and my teeth. I, and my lips. I said nothing about any of your features. I paid you a compliment. What would you rather me say? I think your head would be terrible as a bobblehead. Would that? Exactly. That would be a better compliment. Anyway, my point is, they're using my contact against me to make the bobblehead. Well, head. do you think they're doing that in, in kind of a response to the whole they're not pointy doing hat thing? No. Because you were no, being so... No, 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 no. Slow down. Stop. The whole bobblehead thing came up before the dispute with the pointy hats. Oh, okay. I know that they had mentioned it quite a while back, but I thought that it had all been resolved. Because Rob had been emailing me back and forth. I went, nah, I don't want to do it. They're all reading Bob, so they're going to go ahead and do it. No, they're not. Well, your contract says they can. Oh. Mm. So I went and pulled that out and went, okay, I guess it does. Hmm. I wasn't, uh, why didn't you catch that, Everett? It's radio. What do we care? Yeah. <laughs> if, it were te if it were television... That'd be a different story. And that doesn't mean he doesn't get paid for it, Dan. Oh. Then why are you complaining? I don't think. It doesn't say in there that they have to. I don't have. They don't say I get paid. Oh. You'll get paid. Now, the one thing I can do to stop it mm -hmm. is they want to tie it in with a sponsor. Mm -hmm. Like a little bobblehead holding a Jack Daniels bottle. Mm -hmm. Or Captain Morgan's rum or Captain Morgan gold or something like that. Right. If it's client-related, then I can stop it. Hmm. Because it's using my likeness with a product. I see. So, anyway, I ain't filling out any paperwork. <laughs> to answer well, that, your question, my contract says I don't got to fill nothing out. It says you get paid for these four years from this date to this date. Didn't say anything about filling out paperwork or vacation you don't even You don't even fill out a time card. Yeah, I know that. And you're one of the few people that doesn't. Do you fill out one? Well, not anymore. Okay. What are you bitching about? Well, I was filling it out, and they quit asking for it. I kept turning it in. They stopped asking for it, so I quit. You sure you still work here, Dad? I still get a check. That's not the question he asked. <laughs> anyway, my point is, I ain't filling nothing out. When I'm well, not here, the, the form week, is easy. When I'm, not, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's a lovely form. I bet it's a beautiful one. It is. Personally, I don't know. But you, but you have to sign it, though. Uh, can you, will you at least sign it? If I fill it out for you, will you at least sign it? I don't want it? you to fill it out. That's giving in. <laughs> How much Lennox and Martin on this one? <laughs> Screw them. That's what they get for making me do the bobblehead. And it's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. You're just going to, by doing all this, you're going to create bad blood. 
You're going to end up fighting with management. That's going to be sad. That's okay. We got the new... Uh, did you make the launcher, Eddie? Yes. The little catapult. And Bob's not even here, is he? No, he went to the party. Party. We brought a bunch of dried-up dog dukes that have been soaked in uh, lighter fluid. Oh, flaming <laughs> dog dude. That's well, his great. office is open. He's just not here. Yeah, I guess we can practice shooting in his office. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Nicely built catapult, by the way, Eddie. I got emails today from people inviting me out to go see the fight. J.D. reminded me when he said Lennox Lewis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even employees here. What? Having a fight party. One of the sales guys. Yeah. Watch hang, hang out. Board. Come on to the board. To watch two black guys fight? Yes. They forget where the Oak Cliff was? <laughs> it don't cost down there. <laughs> I they don't. A little more publicity and hype on this one. Yeah, and this one's safer because you don't have to go to Oak Cliff. Just watch on TV. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You don't like Oak Cliff? <laughs> Don't try to turn it around on me. You just said it wasn't safe in Oak Cliff. No, I said it's safer because it's on TV. You don't have to go out in public. Why is Oak Cliff not safe? Well, you're the one that's paranoid. I have no problem with going to Oak Cliff. I don't believe that's what you're you said. You're the one that never leaves your house. No, that's not what you said. No, I said it's you said safer, it's safer than because it. you can watch Why is Oak Cliff not safe? I didn't say Oak Cliff. Go ahead, say it, Dan. You know why it's not safe. I say didn't it. say it wasn't say it. safe. Say it. I'll hit the delay. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I will. <laughs> I never said Oak Cliff was not safe. Yes, I just said it's safer because you can watch it in your own. It's got to be pretty dangerous if it's safer to watch something on TV. It's always safer to watch it on TV mm. rather than going to say the races. How come you don't like Oak Cliff? It's safer to watch the races. For black people, people isn't it? Mm. It has nothing to do with that. Yes, okay. Just being out in public. Dan doesn't like black people now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. I'm nice try. You're the one that said it wasn't safe. And specifically picked Oak Cliff out of all possible areas. Because I mentioned Oak Cliff because Russ said Oak Cliff. I don't think that's why. I don't either. Go ahead, you're on the air. <laughs> don't try to cover now. Yeah, why don't you use the fact that they didn't get your pointy hats to you by the 30th to help you have leverage against them using your life? <clears throat> you ready to start new, sir? <laughs> so you're not going to go see the fight. I just think it's funny how everybody in America is planning social activities around two people beating the hell out of each other. Oh, family. yeah. Parties and stuff. You know, well, people. this one's this one's gotten a lot of pre-publicity through the news, mm -hmm. so it's made people more interested to see it. Well, and keep in mind that one of the participants has bitten another man's ear off. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, and I would have thought that some of this publicity and hype, or a lot of it, is probably put up the uh, little scuffle at the news con or at the press conference and all that. No, I think that one was except, real. <laughs> except the pictures of Lennox Lewis's leg. Where Tyson bit him, he actually took a little chunk out of his leg when he bit him. So during the during the scuffle, you guys want to lay down some cash? Sure. Why not? <laughs> Who do you want? Lewis. Really? Mm-hmm. Lewis and seven. Ooh. Everett, big boxing man over there. Mm -hmm. I'll take Lewis as well. Or well, we're not doing by rounds. Okay, just Lewis then. Or can you do it by rounds? Don't no, they say can. this person won this round, this person won that round? Well, you can sell squares. I don't know how that works. Well, kind of like with Bob McNeil's wife. I still don't know how that works. With a boxing. Well, we're doing well, that by date. Let's just pick. Yeah, we just pick. Be easier. If you want. All right. Is it 15 rounds? Yes. Huh. Although Tyson has never gone 15 rounds. I'm going, has... with, I'm going with Tyson. Cause, just because he's a freak. He is that. There's something to be said with, with being out of control and on some type of drugs. He weighed in. Or not on drugs. Whatever he's doing, he ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing. Not doing if he's supposed this. to be on drugs, he ain't taking them. <laughs> and if he's on drugs, he shouldn't be doing that. That makes sense? Yeah. Yes. All right. He's supposed to be on behavior modification drugs, but he doesn't take them before the fight. Yes. And anyway, during the it's really, it's really hard to discount. He's an animal. Being mentally unbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. No, I think after the last fight, uh, Lennox Lewis is, even though he doesn't come out and say it, I think he's pissed off enough to really... Try and hurt. He appears to be. Embarrassed. I don't care how pissed off you are. That still doesn't compensate for fighting a maniac. He's in better shape. Tyson uh, Tyson weighed in a little fat, uh, heavier. Maniac. You got a point. Fat maniac. <laughs> My money's always on the maniac. <laughs> Who'd I bet on when Eddie was uh, arm wrestling Rob? Eddie. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Eddie. Who do you want to fight? Oh, I think Tyson's going to win. Who would I pick? Tyson. I, yes, I like that. Lennox Lewis has a glass jaw. Does he? Yeah, he gets hit once, he goes down. 
All right, somebody write this down because I forgot already. All right, you three guys, Everett, J.D., and Dan, yeah. you're taking uh, Lewis. Lewis. Eddie and me got the Tyson. Tyson. Okay. How much we bet? I don't know. 50? 50? 25? By the way, this is a real bet. When the mics go off, the bet ain't over. 10? <laughs> <laughs> We're from 50 to 10. Let's see how much I got. I'm with Eddie, 5. I got 20. Okay. It's not that big of a bet. I'll put 20 in. All right. 20. Come down. Eddie, 5? Please. All right. All right, so how does this work? We just throw it all in the pool. We'll split it. Whatever. So if Tyson wins, you guys get more money than... Yeah, wait a minute. Now, that doesn't work unless, you know, if we're trying to bet even money. It ain't our fault that you're picking a loser. <laughs> you, don't, just, you don't hear me bitching. Picking the majority. Picking the one that most people are picking. we got three and a half hours to figure it out between now and seven. <laughs> okay. Somebody work up something that works. Okay. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, I'll tell you why Cliff isn't safe. She got to mix... <laughs> Dan, don't try and disguise your voice by calling on the phone line. That wasn't me. Yeah, whatever. And All I know is you vanished and somebody popped up on the phone line and now you're back. Oh, man. Nice try. All right, 324, J.D. Ryan's on the new 105.3 FM Talk with News. Thank you, Russ. News about this by Service King and by Nextel. That's how business gets done. 1-800-NEXTEL-9 it is. Finally, Friday, June 7th, 2002. Birthday's today. She's legal. Anna Kornikova is 21 today. Tom Jones turns 62. Jenny Jones is 56. Uh, let's see, Ben Stiller turns, Jerry Stiller, rather. Uh, ben, Jerry Stiller turns 75. Barbara Bush is 77. Joan Rivers, 69 today. Nancy, Nancy Sinatra tomorrow will be 62. Johnny Depp, 39. And Michael J. Fox, 41. You going to read that five-year-old story again? I got an older one today. But I won't read it. <laughs> you don't want me to. He was reading uh, his Everett J.D. was reading a story yesterday about a Dallas police officer right. that uh, got suspended okay. for eating like a sandwich out of a car that had been in a wreck. Uh, okay. And as J.D.'s reading on, he goes, Chief Ben Click has suspended officer blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I said, who's suspending? I'm saying that right. Ben Click. Okay. Let me see that. It's like March 27th, 1997. Sometimes in the news business, we do what we call a retrospect. You look back. Yeah, but it's usually relevant to usually tell people, though, right? Well, yeah. I like to sneak it in. Yeah. And you did. Do yourself. You're welcome. A <laughs> uh, 13-year-old California boy was facing a possible eight years in juvenile prison for a spitball attack on a fellow student. He was given a much lighter sentence yesterday, although he will still log some time behind bars. Jeffrey Figueroa, who made national headlines after he was convicted of two felonies for injuring a 14-year-old boy with a speedy spitball. He was ordered to spend a total of one week in juvenile detention now, just on weekends, in a case that his lawyer says showed prosecutors intended on, quote, criminalizing childhood behavior. Dare, the uh, getting kids off drugs thing, has been penned as an ineffective drug prevention program for with police chief. It is Ralph Mendoza now, right? Okay, good. Uh, said uh, that he's eliminating DARE and reassigning officers to other duties in part because the program has not proven to reduce drug use by youth. It's too cumbersome and lacks flexibility. A six-year national study released last year supports his assessment. Actor Woody Harrelson was arrested in London after a bizarre taxi chase in the early, hour, in the early hours of the morning through London. Harrelson was accused of breaking an ashtray and a lock on the door of a black taxi cab, taking him back to his hotel in central London after he was out for a night in the town. Then in the scene that could have come out of one of his movies, he jumped into another cab with the driver, paid him a lot of money to speed off. The officers eventually caught up with him and arrested him. He's a nut. Jennifer Lopez and her dancer husband, Chris Judd, have separated. A source confirmed that to the Associated Press. Who broke up? Jennifer Lopez. Oh, okay. And Chris Judd. All right. A source said the uh, pair parted amicably and uh, no immediate plans for divorce. They were just married back September 29th. Yeah. Dionne Warwick may have entered into a plea agreement to avoid charges of marijuana possession, but that hasn't stopped her from claiming she has no idea how the 11 joints found their way into her lipstick case. That's because she was stoned. And she was at the Miami airport. Uh, she says, quote, or her spokesman says, quote, it wasn't hers and she doesn't know how it got there. She said, to this day, I am puzzled about exactly what happened, but through the grace of God, I can now put this behind me. There's the audio. Where? Right here? That's it. All right. A bad company opens in theaters today, and this cut Chris Rock was asked how he handles all the attention he gets from the ladies. Chris Rock, cut one, attention, ladies, bad company. Uh, you know, it's something I have to go through a lot. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's a card. I know you'd like that. In the entertainer, I am. <laughs> you know, situations arise. You know, got to do the right thing. Sometimes it's easy to do the right thing. Sometimes it's hard. But you got to do the right thing. So that's bad company coming out. Also, divine secrets of the. How can he have really great concerts? Yeah, it'd be so stupid during <laughs> interviews. Because it wasn't written out. Right. No. Beforehand. All right, go ahead. I remember said yesterday, I always think of my ad libs ahead of time. He said that? Yeah. He said, yeah. I always plan my ad libs, so obviously he didn't plan that one. You're right. Uh, Ashley Judd, uh, this is uh, on the Divine Secrets of the Yahoo Sisterhood. That is out. Ashley Judd here on cut number two talking about shooting a uh, child beating scene in the movie where they whipped up on kids. You know, the belt was made out of felt. It weighed no more than a feather. All of that stuff is, you know, the little buckle is cardboard with magic marker. So it's, you know, movie-making magic, but effective, very effective. And you'll notice that Vivi only beats three of her fine little children because one of them had sensitive ears and didn't like the screaming, so he had a play date that day. And they loved it. They absolutely loved it, especially the older boy. He'd be like, I was really scared in that one, man. I was good. It's <laughs> also got uh, Sandra Bullock in it and James Garner. That'll be an interesting little movie, kind of a chick flick, though. You think? They say. Uh, I haven't seen it. I don't know. Sisterhood of the Yayas? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? Uh, the Divine That's a kick of the Yaya Sisterhood. Yeah. That could be a That's Western. A kind yeah. of That's a Western. Yeah, spaghetti Western. Okay. <laughs> Swedish Western. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The 2002 MTV Movie Awards were broadcast last night. Here cut number three. Sarah Michelle Geller was asked how she thought the Spider-Man spoof went over with the movie's cast. Pearson thought it was funny. I'm pretty confident about that. Well, what was the spoof? I didn't see it. Okay. That Kirsten was very... So there was a spoof in the um, MTV Music Awards. Apparently. On the Spider-Man. you have a included that in the setup of this audio clip? I did. I said on the spoof that went over with the movie's cast, I don't know what I would do. I didn't see it. How come you didn't tape it? I didn't actually know it was on. I don't watch, I don't watch MTV. <laughs> I haven't turned on MTV in 10 years. Well, tape it anyway. We still have 18 to 34 year olds that listen to the show. That would involve having to know it was on, which I didn't. They'll be rebroadcasting a million times. But then it won't be news anymore. Then I can do a retrospect. Very amused. She actually sent us a line saying she thought it was funny. Um, no, it's all in good jest. People Why don't you just bring audio in from the Bob Newhart show? Because <laughs> I didn't record that either. On the Sword Show. So. I'm sure that was lovely audio clip. All right. Will Smith was asked if winning the MTV Award Live for Best Male Performance in Ali makes up for not winning the Oscar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how he, he, he dances around pretty well. <laughs> Now, you know, I, I don't look at it that way. You know, the the, uh, the awards are, it's a, it's a fun night. You get to get dressed up and go and hang out with, you know, other famous people. So, I mean, I, I don't look at it like that. I mean, it's always uh, fun to win, always fun to be, be recognized. So, you know, I, I don't even view it in that way, but I'm happy to take one home. I think I'd rather go to the, the, the video awards than I would to the Oscars. Yeah. They seem so stuffy. Yeah. I went one year to the MTV Awards. It was kind of fun. Yeah, I know. I was there with you. Mm -hmm. No, I went one time without you. Oh, really? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, when I was music director at the Eagle. Oh, oh back in the 80s. 80s. Oh, hold on. Yeah. yeah, Kevin? Yeah, I just want to let you know that spoof they did last night on the movie awards. Mm -hmm. They spoofed the scene in the alleyway where Kirsten Dunst is kissing Spider-Man hanging upside down in the rain. And they had Sarah Michelle Gellar wearing something under her shirt that made her look... With her nipples out? Yeah, it looked like they were just huge, and that's all it was. Pretty funny. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right. All right, there's news and information brought to us by the 105.3 FM Talks second anniversary party. It's at the Texas Motorplex. And yes, we got tickets pretty much everywhere we go. Free tickets for you Saturday, June 22nd from 3 until 10. Live bands, big toys, and big drinks. And, of course, Eat My Pie will also be there. I'm J.D. Ryan on the Talk That Rocks Texas, the new 105.3 FM Talks. <laughs> More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. What? That's an unusual song. Well, they all can't be headbangers. Yes. 
David Stone, who puts those together. Yeah. He actually called me at home. He goes, is this right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What the hell? All right. Do a check on traffic. Jonathan Dodge at the controls of the new 105.3 FM Talks White Lightning. Hey! What? Hey! Why do you keep putting these people in here with me? Is this some sort of amusement for you? Who's in there? Oh, Woodhead, Wood, Woodrow. Oh, it was Woodrow today? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it was today. I thought it was next Friday. No, why is he in here? What? What's up, Big Dog? What? Tell him to move the mic closer to his face. Put the mic closer to your head. Hello? Woodrow. Hey. What up? What's up, Big Dog? Why are you doing this? Ah, shut up. What do you got? Woodrow, you're going to have to speak a little bit louder. I can't hear you. Okay, how's that? That's a little bit better. Okay. Hey, he's finally learning what a microphone is for. I got this big head, this big old head set up here, man. All he's going to do is complain. All right, what do you got? Let's go. Hey, I got a whole lot. I'm going to try something here. Hey, Woodrow. Hey. You know what it's like to go straight up? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Right, is that too high? Oh. All right, we'll go back down. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hey, show me about them girls over there, man. <laughs> oh, you horny bastard. All right. Just oh. report. Shut up. I'm working. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Good God Almighty. Don't make me do this again. This report brought to you by True Value to make your Father's Day sale has everything he wants. Coastal Deluxe Folding Armchair is just nine eighty eight. Another great part of the month. Only. At True Value Northbound 635 and Saeed right lane blocked the blade due to an accident involving an 18 wheeler. Traffic unwinding southbound 935 south or on Thornton, Illinois. As due to an earlier accident, out in Fort Worth northbound highway or mid city northbound highway 121 from 360 to Mustang left lane is closed. As due to a stall vehicle, it's got about a five minute delay. This report brought to you by Expedia.com. They are now offering web fare, making it even easier to find the lowest fare. Expedia.com. Don't just travel. Travel light. That's traffic. I'm Jonathan Dodge in the new 105.3 FM. Fight. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, partly cloudy, 67 for a low tonight. Should be near 90 tomorrow, about 89, actually. 85 degrees and partly cloudy right now at the Talk That Rocks, Texas. The new 105.3 FM Talk. Is uh, <coughs> Nick still in his office? Yes, I saw him walking around a minute ago. Dan, what is, uh, I always forget, what is Rob's extension? Say it again. What is Rob's extension? Uh, 806. All right. Hello, it's Rob. What are you doing? Uh, just answering some. We just got Corsican. I got an email from them uh, for the parade. So fire uh, police. Uh, I think it's police. Uh, Who you got confirmed so far? Yeah, Corsicana Police Department. Um, North Richland Hills. Well, Corsicana, Red Oak, Wilmer, White Settlement, Dallas County Sheriff, Haltom, Mansfield. Um, and then I still got to get some voicemails. I just noticed my voicemail lights on. So that's only eight departments. Yeah, we should call Denton County. We know the sheriff up there. He's already. Oh, you've contacted everybody, right? Um, yeah. I mean, just we've got a pretty healthy list here. So it's just you know we've emailed them and faxed them, and uh, you know. When did the faxes go out? They probably wrapped up yesterday. Okay. All the final ones. Well, what, whoever we didn't, uh, whoever got kicked back as an email, like the email address was bad or something, we followed up with the fax. Now, Crow and I are going to just call them and, and make sure that they got the information and find out where it is in the process of getting it approved. Yeah, if we only have eight cars, that's going to blow. No, we'll have, we'll have more. Also, um, Dallas, Dallas Fire Department uh, declined and Plano Fire Department declined, but... Um, the message I got from the chief was that he's not going to be here, so I don't... For which department? For the Dallas Fire Department. So I'm not... We sure. don't need him. We just need his truck. Yeah, I know. I know. So I'm going to I'm gonna get back in touch with them and see if they can send a representative. That's really going to blow if Dallas and Fort Worth Fire and PD don't show. Yes, it will. I mean, it's our two cities of license. Mm -hmm. That would only make sense. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're also getting some, uh, some letters from some of these departments. Um, in the emails, um, the uh, the fire chief of River Oaks, uh, 
uh, fire department. Oh, we know him. Yeah. Um, Captain... Bill. Uh, Bill Cruz. Bill Cruz, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he basically said that uh, he was lucky enough to be there when you came up with the idea for the Back the Red campaign in 1999. Um after his department lost two uh, members of the uh, of their department in the Lake Worth Church fire. Yeah. Um, just went on to explain and uh, said that how happy he was. Why are you out of breath? What are you doing back there? I'm just running around trying to trying to get this stuff taken care of. Um, okay. Please forward to Russ my heartfelt <laughs> gratitude for all he's done. I had the pleasure of spending time in studio with Russ and came to know okay. him very compassionate. I remember. Thank you. Would, I'm just trying to explain to you what I understand. On. Okay, they're coming. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're in. So, um, and then uh, I got something from a detective right out there at White Settlement. Mm -hmm. um, he said that uh, he appreciates the Listeners Foundation. Um, uh, he was the guy that was there when uh, you presented the check to Vicky Monet. Um, and the check was that White? I guess it was Officer Monet's. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, widow. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was the one with the kids. Yeah, and I guess this guy was a detective who rode with the captain um, during the uh, uh, when he had to pull the guy out of the out of the house. Um, he'd be honored to participate in the raising of money for the foundation. So they're coming. They're coming too. Yeah, you could so. have just said that. Well, I'm just trying to tell you what's going on. I mean, we're back here busting our ass trying to make this work, and I just want you to know how how Rob. much these people appreciate everything you're doing. Rob, it's okay. Right down. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Man, you, this is... I'm sorry. You can read the whole email if you want. No, I apologize. It. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> I'll just I'll keep I'll just keep updating you as the departments come through, and if we have any problems, then maybe you can help us. You know, get get you know, turn the nos into yeses. That's all. Okay. So, all right. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. See. You. All right. It's kind of testy today. He's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> Testy being short for testosterone. Yeah. We're going to end up with eight departments, and this thing's going to blow. No. no. It is. The parade's going to be no. 80 feet long. <laughs> <laughs> Russ at the very front of it, high stepping with a baton. Yeah, I'm going to do that 45 minutes to Ennis. We have <laughs> two more weeks. Well, if the rest of the faxes went out last night, I guess it's all right. It's only been a few days. Yeah. Everybody's got to get approval. Um, I'll bet you Laura Miller screws us on this. Well, I'm sure she'll try, but it's not her decision. Yeah. The city manager and the department. I believe if the mayor of the city of Dallas goes in and goes, hey, th I think this is a good idea. We need a little boost now for the cops and fire department anyway since we screwed them out of their raise. Right. Let's participate in this. I would hate to think that the departments would say no just because they, some of them don't like her. That she goes in and asks and they're going, just because you're asking? No. I think most cops and firemen know that, you know. May not know the show, but they know of it. I would think so in the rank and file, but I'm not sure at the executive level if they will consider it. Mm, I may have to get that Tyrell Bolton on the phone. I'll call Ben Quick for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do that? All right. Oh, I got a call from a uh, volunteer fire department. I gave them uh, Rob's number. Okay. But, yeah, volunteer fire departments would work as well. <laughs> Even more so. They're doing it for free. Yeah. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hello? Yes? Good morning. Hi. Uh, just to let you know that occasionally the Dallas Police Department does have a habit of saying no to the mayor's office. Do they really? Years ago, yeah, a few years ago, the mayor of Taipei was coming in at the mayor of Dallas' request back when Ron Kirk was mayor. Right. The mayor's office called over to the Dallas Police Department and said, hey, we need some motorcycles to escort this guy around. And they said, uh, let me think. No. They said the only people that they will uh, do that for is the president and vice president. And that was at the request of the mayor's office. They still said no. Well, maybe we'll just contact them directly and scoot around the mayor's office. Well, we know that you have more strokes than the mayor of Taipei anyway. Well, I don't know about that. But, if I mean, if it's if it's... If it's going to hurt us other than help us with having Laura Miller do it, then we'll just call directly. Yeah, true. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hello? 
I'll tell you what, I hope that parade doesn't go near Oh, Cliff, you got some... <laughs> Dan. What? Knock it off. I didn't, I didn't do it. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. The only reason he does that is to make the older brother look bad. No. He's not Daddy, hideous like that. Hey, Daddy, guess what? I already got your Father's Day gift. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. Right. And for him, that's probably last-minute shopping. Yeah, it was. I'm telling you, he's, he just thinks that way. When we were up in my sister's in Virginia, he left a thank A 13-year-old kid left a thank you note on the pillow without... I never mentioned it, never brought it up. I haven't, I haven't thought... He has got you so snowed. No, he's not. He's just not that way. He's not the way that you think. I guess. Does it make his older brother look bad? Oh, yes. <laughs> We even laughed about that. I'm, I've a couple of times said, Russ thinks you're doing this to make him look bad. I wouldn't do that. Well, of course he would. <laughs> Here, son, here's $20. Here's okay. some running around money. And then he goes and buys something for his dad. A complete <laughs> suck up. Oh, sure. It worked. It works. That just makes it grow exponentially. It's just, and he doesn't have to do anything to make the other one look bad, trust me. <clears throat> so is the other one gone for the summer? Gone for the summer. Last time he was gone for the summer, though, he's back in four days. That was what I said to when he got on the plane. I said, don't come back on Greyhound in four days. Did he really come back that quick? Yeah. He was supposed to be gone six weeks, and he just put himself on a bus. Couldn't handle band camp or whatever it was. He missed you. No, he didn't miss me. Sure yeah, what, he did. what was it he hated about band camp? I mean, just how could you tell in four days that you weren't going to like it? it was, I, this, what I think happened is he got crossed with somebody up there and wanted to get out. I don't know what really happened, but that's... Yeah, that wasn't a normal band camp. That was drum and bugle corps, drum and that's, that's absolutely brutal. That's I mean, they, they, there's no fooling around. There's no uh, half a day of sleep. playing your horn and then sleeping. Yeah, yeah, this is, you get up at 6 a.m. and you start working out, and you work out all day. Doing what? Practicing the routines for the shows, playing, uh, you get up and do a rehearsal first thing in the morning. Did you ever go to one of these brutal band camps, Dan? Uh, the brutal drum and bugle corps I did from the time I was 14 till I was 20 years old every summer. That was part of the reason I, I sent him last summer because Dan said, that's probably the best thing for him. I've done it, and it's brutal. He'll have to get up every morning and do that stuff. And I thought, perfect. A, he's out of the house. B, he's having it. So you have a regiment. That's C, fine. he can get away. He's a, C, he got back I mean, he's bus. not locked there. That's the, well, I've been the reason yeah. not to do it. Yeah. yeah, he came home in four days. So what makes you think he's not going to come back in four days now? Because he won't know where I live. You can't move in four days. He won't come back in four days. His mom won't put him on a plane. He doesn't have any money this time. He had access to cash, enough, just enough to buy the bus ticket. He didn't eat in like a day and a half. He spent every cent I gave him on that bus ticket. He didn't eat in a day and a half because it was like in Wisconsin or someplace. You need help moving? Are you really moving? Yeah. So when he comes back in a couple of months, he's not going to know where you live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> JD. All right, well, he comes back from wherever he went. Uh -huh. Then he goes where? College. Straight to college. Texas A&M Commerce. And he couldn't stay in band camp. Mm -hmm. But he's going to be able to stay in college. I don't know. Are you going to pay for it? No. I've already told him that. How's he going to go? Uh, he's got some loans and some scholarships to the music department. Did he graduate? I don't know. Wait a minute. What happened to the graduation gift that I gave you? You didn't give me a graduation gift. I gave it to give him. You did not give me anything. Nothing. I was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were thinking about it. You were waiting to see if he actually graduated. That was a bet. Wait a minute. Wasn't there a bet in there someplace? That he graduated? Yeah. Well, I don't know if he did or not. He left the Well, school. normally, somebody tells you, they look at you and you go... You graduated. Here's your paperwork. Mm -hmm. Anybody do that? No, because that ceremony's tomorrow night. He's going to miss it. Yes, he is. Isn't there someone you could call and check? Yeah, I'll call, I'll call the school eventually. Well, how can you not know if you graduated? I didn't ask him before I put him on the plane today. Wasn't an issue. Don't you got to graduate before you go to college? Yes. It, yeah. it generally helps. If yeah. he hasn't graduated, then obviously when he comes back. I don't think somebody's going to give you loans and scholarships if you don't have a high school diploma. That's true. I'm guessing. Those won't go through, obviously. If he hasn't graduated, none of that. All that stops. <clears throat> Seems like there's some holds in this plan. <laughs> He's coming back in August. He only had one assignment to turn in. I'm assuming he turned it in yesterday. So he's coming back in August. Yes. He's not going to know where you live. 
and he's going to college. But you don't even know if he can get into the college because you don't know if he graduates. By then, I will. By the time he gets back, I'll know all that. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll have some sort of communication with him between now and then, email or Mm -hmm. telephone. Mm -hmm. I I can't believe you didn't at least ask him last night or this morning before you shipped him off. Nope. If he graduated. Mm -hmm. Did you even Uh, speak uh, to him, actual words? Oh, yeah, we talked. I told him not to come home in four days. You've turned into an ass for a father. I have, you're right. I used to defend you. I have, you're absolutely correct. Justifiably so. Go ahead, you're on the air. <sighs> Hello? Dan. Russ. Hey, buddy, the schools are not closed. Y'all can still call and find out if you graduated right now. Why don't you do that, John? We can do that. Let's write down all the info. Well, they're, they're just not going to give it to you over the phone. They don't no. know who you are. Yeah, they do. Just, they know you? Yes. Oh, believe me, we've been in contact. <clears throat> oh, yes. How much cash I got? <laughs> All right, I got the 20 that I put down on the Lennox Lewis fire, right? Okay. I got another 20 that he didn't graduate. He did not graduate. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, I'm down for that. <laughs> he just had to turn in one assignment? One assignment. And then he'd graduate. Correct. No way he graduated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 20 bucks. Eddie? This ain't a good deal, though. I'll go the other way. $5 says he did it. Well, $55 out if he didn't. That little bastard. <laughs> well, you really think he did? I really don't know. I haven't given I was going to think of it next week. I'm just glad he's on the plane. The guy's right. Schools are still open. Yeah, I know. I can call. You want to do it during a break? Sure. I can do it. So are you throwing in cash or are you just kind of... Oh, yeah. I'll put in... I'll put in... But do I have to pay all of you 20 So it's going to cost me 65 to lose. Yeah. You're betting on your son. Come on. Well, look how much you win. 55, whatever. Yeah. Sounds like a safe bet to me. <laughs> it's your own flesh and blood. Trust your family. I go 50. <laughs> Quit it. I'm with you. 50? Yeah. No, not 50. 20. I'll do 20. We then pay I'll... you 50. You pay us 20. No. Well, that's a worse deal for us. Let's just keep it at 20. And the off chance that he would graduate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Go ahead, uh, Ahmed. Uh, it's not Ahmed. What is it? Uh, Amel. All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you can go to college after... Uh, you can go to college if you've not graduated high school. It Basically, the rule is... As long My as college class, always has. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the class that you... The, the class that graduated, as long as the class that you were in in high school has graduated and you've been accepted to school, you can go to, you can go to college. Without a high school diploma? That is correct. That makes sense. I did it. Oh, well. Yeah, but your name is also Emil. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> You've got him there. Yeah. Yeah, they. I don't they, know that I understand this. Okay. This. The All class, right. Let's say this. Let's go with this round. All, All right. right. Say I'm 14 years old. Okay. Okay. And I stopped going to school. Right. Five years later, I would have been the class of 79. Okay. okay. Then in 1979, even though I've been in school for five years, can I go get in college? Were you accept were you accepted into the school due to test scores or whatever their criteria was? Yes. Yes. So even though I haven't been to school in four or five years. Well yes. there you go. He just told you the catch though. You have to be accepted. What what's required for acceptance to college? High school. Uh college. usually it's, it's dependent upon the different schools. I mean a lot of times it's either SAT scores or ACT scores. It could be um yes. you know a lot of times what? It is he did take the A C T and scored very high. What yes. can you get on that? I don't know. I think 32 is the max, or it used to be. 3,200? No, 32. 32. Oh, I think you got like 29. I'll bet you cash right now I couldn't pass a GED. Mm, I bet you, buddy, I couldn't either. Oh. Yes, uh, is it uh, Ariana? Yes, I know you're always looking for ways to increase the funds in the foundation. Or get late. <laughs> and I always hear you talk about how you cook for your dates and your house guests. Must and get how late. you eat that weird stuff like the no carb spaghetti thing. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think about putting out an illustrated cookbook featuring naked uh, female chefs in the kitchen? You mean with my recipes? 
Sure. I bet L.A. would model their recipe for tossed salad. We talked about like that before. That. No, we didn't. Not with the naked chicks, but you may, you putting together some of your stuff. That you cook. I like the naked chick angle. Yeah. I never, oh, yeah. Never Have them in the that. kitchen. Mm-hmm. You know, which is either like uh, just a little apron with the, the nipple sticking out. Yeah. Well, the boob. be the Vanna White style presentation of Russ's. Uh, Lingerie, menu. stuff like that. Yeah. There you go. Throw in a few Brumleys. I would buy one. Everett. <laughs> we got a good idea going here. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's a good idea, but it would require you writing down your stuff. Taking the time and energy to do that. And well, how many would you put in there? Fifty recipes, maybe. It's a lot. Is it? Maybe twenty, five. Plus, if you pack it full of naked chicks. Oh yeah. Oh, it'll sell. I mean, there's no doubt. Yeah. Pack it full of naked chicks. Put one, one recipe. One. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. yeah, I could do that. We'd have to hunt the chicks now. Yeah. L.A.'d come in, she'd, she'd model. She wants cash, though, because she kind of does that for a living. Well, nobody's going to get cash if the whole cookbook goes to the foundation. I'm just visualizing all the different shots. Just mm-hmm. naked chicks playing around in the kitchen, looking like they're cooking. Spaghetti sauce flying all over the place. Mm-hmm. Certain recipes with fat-free mayonnaise. Mm-hmm. Maybe a couple of shots with... No, I don't know. One of them was... <laughs> Maybe a shot like that. Yeah, that'd be good. I think Jerry has some of those. Uh, L.A. left you. Yeah, but there's no food in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it could be. I like this. <laughs> I say Lee, let's do it. Okay. What was that club that um, that was out at the phone party? With the chicks that I liked. Was it Silver City? Silver City. Silver City. Yes. I've been there. It's very nice. We got a great lunch buffet. We can use some of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, somebody write this down, because otherwise I'm going to forget later. I wrote it. Go ahead, Rudy. Hey, you're up. What's up? No. Nah. Hey, J.D.? Yes. I was just wondering, how could you not know if your son graduated or not? It's, I mean, that's like the first thing on your mind when he's in school, he's going to graduate or not, isn't it? It's very good. It's very complicated, and I really don't want to get into it on the radio. Well, you just got that much other stuff going on? That yeah, it's really kind of complicated and kind of private. And he doesn't want to get into it on the radio. Sorry. Hey, well, isn't uh, you guys lives on the Yeah. <laughs> how come you don't know your kid's graduating? I was wondering that, too. Because it would have happened today. Yes. And I only spoke to him for about an hour, and uh-huh. he didn't come up. And it didn't, it's not really relevant to the happenings of this day. If, it, if I find out Monday, I find out Monday. But you wouldn't be excited? I mean, I got this great big gift that I got him for graduation. You didn't buy no, him anything. No, I don't know what to do with it. I was excited. I thought he'd graduate at one point, and then they called and said he had not. Hmm. Hmm. So I just let it go. I said, you know what? But you had to drive him to the airport, right? I did. What did you talk about? We talked about... Uh, how this time away is what we both need. And at no point in the conversation, you couldn't just say, not at all. hey, by the way, did you uh-uh. turn in that paperwork? Uh-uh. Why not? I'm letting him handle it himself. I it, actually, you know what, J.D.'s defense, if it, was, if it was on my mind, whether he turned the paper in or not, and if he didn't, I was going to be really pissed off. Mm-hmm. I'd just rather not know until he's gone. Basically, I did not want Because otherwise, I didn't want if to start it were me, anything. I'd have a great big fit in the car driving him to the airport. Yeah, I didn't want that to be the last thing for two months. I'm with J.D. on that one. Okay. Yes, Jeffrey? Hey, yeah, Russ. Hello? Yes. Oh, on your cookbook. It would be a great idea if you to have some of the listeners that you guys have that are really hot go up there and audition. I think I'm constipated. The cookbook would be a great way to sell it. I'd buy it. You I look bloated. I think I took too many Vicodin. How many did you take? I don't know. That's a great idea. Thank you, Jeffrey. Okay. You were supposed to take one. I took. I didn't take many more than that. <laughs> Along with the Jack Daniels? No, I didn't do that. Okay. Today? Yesterday. Oh, you weren't here yesterday. I hurt my back. What happened? I don't know. You just woke up and it was... You know, what's funny. I didn't realize this because when I did it Wednesday night before I went to bed, I just some kind of muscle in my back, upper back. I, I don't even care anymore. 
um, I forgot about this because when it happened Wednesday night, it hurt really bad and I couldn't breathe. I went, that's it, I'm going to die in a house and nobody's here. That's right. We wouldn't know till the next day and Dad and I'd be going, I'm not getting emails. I was in a bad mood. So then I got a, a, a bottle of wine that I had in the fridge, some Arbor Mist or whatever. 249 a bottle at Target. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. Drank that, sitting on the couch. I thought, you know, maybe this will just relax me. Everything will be better. And now I hurt and I can't breathe and I'm drunk. <laughs> I got my cell phone. I forgot about this until today. I got my cell phone, called my own home, and left a message in case I died. Somebody could check that and know what happened. You did not. I swear to Jesus Christ. <laughs> I described where the pain was, what was going on. That's bizarre. Why didn't you just call one of us and tell us? I would have been communicating with humans, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this way it was just a machine. Right. I got you. And it's funny because then finally I make it to bed and I'm laying there. And if you get just in the right spot, you don't feel the pain. But if you turn, then you just stop breathing. And I'm drunk. I'm laying in bed. I'm looking at Abby. And I went, there's ever a time you're going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> funny if Abby goes, oh, what do you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I enjoy watching you at the computer. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Have you ever notice while you're at the computer, I lick my snot? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nobody ever has done that? Got really drunk or stoned or whatever and looked at their dog and go, talk. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid we, and I went and had a dog. Yeah? And the dog would walk in while you were doing something. You get all weird. All of a sudden, it's like I'm getting busted. The dog would look at you. Were you drunk? No. Well, that's not the question I asked. Well, I mean, it's your, you know, whacking. Yeah, and the dog's there looking at you. Well, they know what you're doing. I know. They're actually laughing that you got to use your hands. <laughs> but you can't lick. Yeah. I like staring at them when they're trying to take a squat because I get really embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> they don't get embarrassed. Yes, they do. Try it sometime. <laughs> Next time Abby's out taking a squat. Why are, you, why are you staring at your dogs when they're dumping? Well, because it gets them embarrassed. <laughs> they get this look on their face like, what? No way. <laughs> but then they come in the house when you're on the, the toilet taking a crap and you slam the door in their <laughs> face, right? No, they come, they barge right in. They don't care. Rude. Dogs are very rude. <laughs> this is the strangest conversation. Try it. I like my question better. You ever get really drunk and try and talk to your animal? No. Never done that. You ever stare at it while it's taking a dump? No. <laughs> It'd be funny if you're staring at it while it took a dump and it looked at you and went, quit. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk. You never have. <laughs> you never stared at me taking a crap before. <laughs> <laughs> I just decided your kid doesn't need a high school diploma. <laughs> You're right. I got one. It didn't get me anywhere. What is it, David? Hey, if J.D.'s son was going to graduate, wouldn't he have wanted to stick around for the graduation ceremony? And did he buy a cap and gown for the graduation ceremony? No. Why not? He knew he was leaving town. Oh. So he made the plans before he knew about grad- the graduation day? Correct. Oh, okay. You really should take all the stories that you don't want to tell on the air mm-hmm. and put it in a book. Because oh, it'd be a good one. While some of that stuff was going on? Yeah. I almost thought you were making it up. I know. <laughs> Dan, what does the chick on two want? I got to take a break. Oh, well, she just wanted to uh, tell you that if you didn't want to do a whole book, mm-hmm. if that became overwhelming, just do 12 and do a calendar. Yeah, that's right. Dang. That's a lot quicker, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if some people would have that all year. Yeah. Naked chicks. Yeah. All right. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back. We'll come back to the news. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. All right, 427, J.D. Ryan is here. Everett Newton, the rock and roll attorney. Associate producer, Eddie Boyd. Producer Dan Lewis. And the lovely studio audience. I saw you go over there and beat on the window. They weren't paying attention. Yeah, I know. Eddie's in there messing with them. Bob's going to get an applause sign put in the new studio. You're kidding. (laughs) This is going to be so cool. I cannot wait for our move. Yeah. Oh. When's it going to be? The move? Uh, they're thinking the, the middle of July. About the time we come back from vacation. Cool. 
They weren't going to put any TVs in there. What? After everything that happened with 9-11. Right. We didn't have a TV in here before then, did we? No. Uh, no. We stole it out of the production room. Right. They had to put this one in here the day that uh, the, the planes flew into the World Trade Center. Mm-hmm. And Bob's going, all right, what do you think What do you think we need in the studio when you guys come in today? I went, how about a TV set? Some access to the outside world. As much as I like staring out the window, I don't think nobody's going to stand out there and tell me anything. So with all the talk of the plasma monitors and all the stuff that's going in Those are monitors for the computers. They consider that enough. Okay. Oh, no, that changed. Yeah. Because then they went, okay, well, we'll put a, a big TV in there with CNN. Uh, 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 uh. Five TVs. One for each, by four, five, eight, eleven, thirty-three, mm-hmm. and CNN. They went, that's six. I went, get rid of thirty-three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we negotiated down to four TVs. One will be on CNN. The other ones will be on the local broadcast. They'll all feed into the console, so if anything happens... Bring them right up. Right. Perfect. Everybody wow. gets their own computer monitor, all access to the Internet. Awesome. J.D. will still read stories that are five years old. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do it from a brand new plasma screen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that rules. I just couldn't believe that after everything that's happened and all the, the, the running around that we had to do on, on September 11th and how this station wasn't ready to put out news information, right. you think that would have been first thing on their mind? Talk station, some big event happens, you need to know about it and have all the information right at your fingertips. Well, what are the chances that happening again? You. Uh, <laughs> or any other big news event. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just a point. I didn't care. <laughs> well, the TVs, I want the TVs are like 69 bucks a piece at Best Buy. Go get four or five of them, let's go. Where are we going to put them? I don't care. Oh, we're going to do news, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. What is it, Robert? Hey, buddy. I yeah. can just barely hear you. Hold on. Let me see. Yada, yada. What about now? A little bit better. Oh, hold on. Well, I'm just sticking with this while I'm sitting here. And now? Very good. Okay, go ahead. Um, just, a, just a thought. Uh, you've been trying to uh, tick off several ethnic groups. I yeah. think you're out on the protest. Why? Well, I think the homos were your last chance. Well, and because you got, why wouldn't the homos come up now? Huh? Why wouldn't the homos go ahead and come on up? Well, let's see. You married a gay couple. Oh. Excuse me. Married, uh, performed the ceremony right. for a gay couple. Uh, you cried at the christening of a little boy, of the baby. You got the crippled kid, the bike, buddy. The queers love that garbage. <laughs> You're out. You got a point. <laughs> First of all, I don't remember crying at the christening. Uh-huh. I think you were. You kept calling him pumpkin and you got all That's period. That's because he was crying and I felt bad for him. He wasn't crying. Yes, he was. He was cooing. He was crying. Yeah. That's all he did was crying. No. What? You. He was crying. So were you. <laughs> you got black people not only calling up but coming up to the station and dropping the N-bomb frequently. Yeah. Uh, you get the Mexican people laughing at the chicken noises. <laughs> yeah. You had fat chicks call in yesterday and play a game that made fun of fat chicks. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you missed it. Oh, hey, man. Eddie, Eddie, load up the, uh, the, the open for the new... Uh, the, <laughs> in fact, the open to the game is actually funnier than the game itself. <laughs> when chicks were calling in to play the game, they were saying, I'm huge, I'm fat, can I play the game? <laughs> Here's, here's the open. Listen. Hey, all you fat bitches, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Bitch is Fat. And now, your host of The Bitch. Isn't it funny how of all the things that David Stone voices, this one seems to have a little bit more enthusiasm to it? Oh, yeah. Hit that one reloaded again. Eddie. We played this open two or three times yesterday. We just liked the beginning. Guys were calling in and requesting it later in the show. Hey, all you fat bitches, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Bitch is Fat. And one more time. Your host of... Hey, all you fat bitches, come on. 
has a certain zest in his voice. Dare I ask how you win? <laughs> it's just like the price is right. They uh, priced a bunch of items. Eddie uh, pulled up products like double stuffed cheese pizza, extra big mattresses so your fat doesn't flap out on the floor, <laughs> stuff like that. I and you know, could you tell the difference when we were playing with the chicks and all the other games? Most guys, when they were bidding on like the white, the the trash is white or whatever, uh, twenty four dollars, twenty eight dollars, whatever. These chicks were doing twenty nine ninety nine. Some chicks say the the double stuffed pizza thing. Right, she on. got it right on, didn't she, Eddie? Yeah, Get on the money. <laughs> Ten ninety nine exactly. Yeah. Wow. What is is you have people calling up playing games that make fun of whatever quirk or ethnicity they are. Right. Buddy, I think you can say it now. Everett, tell it. Don't. Drag me into this. You are the Messiah. You are indeed. <laughs> <With him. laughs> but he's right. There's got to be somebody that we. Uh uh Dan. No. Yes. There's no one left. We haven't t touched on the uh, the Indians. Uh, the dot Indians or the. Ooh. No, we've done dot Indians. Did we do the dots? Well, well we need to do the feathers. Yeah, we make fun of that. What's this guy that calls all the time? Yeah, that's the dots. Right. We need to make fun of the feathers. Yeah, they. Do so you want to go after American Indians now? Well, yes. You know what? It's it's a pretty good bet because, uh, you know, some of the American Indian groups are really sensitive right now. You, are they really? You have to give yourself a uh, some sort of title. You see his eyes light up. Are they really? Yeah. <laughs> you need a mascot. Dan, get me a get me a mad Indian. Get on the computer. Hit a search engine. <laughs> What we need is search engine. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh, you get it? Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Nice. But if they're really upset about the uh, the logos, get a search the engine. I got the search yeah. engine. So yeah. come up with one that's uh, a logo for the show that's completely insulting to the American Indian community. How about a Navajo? Oh. Yeah, a black Indian chick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they're all upset about the Braves and the chopping. And the yeah, we could just like a, we could combine them all into one. Just mm -hmm. everything that everybody's pissed off about. Black Indian and promiscuous. Yeah. And if if she don't get her two hundred dollars, yeah, she scalps him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that'll do it. Yeah. I think you've done it. All right, that's good. And her Asian chauffeur. Now nah, the Asians, they they probably drive up here for protest, but yeah. they never make it. <laughs> All right, that's what we do next. The Indians are next. In fact, I'm surprised they haven't gotten they haven't protested just because we left them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've ignored the Indian community, the American Indians, and I apologize. Mm -hmm. A trend which will not continue. Right, we're going to rectify that this weekend. All right, that's what these people want, and we'll start news. Go ahead, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, uh, you forgot one group that you still have made upset that you haven't resolved. What's that? Uh, the Bible thumpers. Uh, they don't protest. They threaten to protest and nobody ever shows up or the pussies back down. Well, they call constantly and give I know, but they never, they never do anything. They never come out like they promise. You think if you were, if you would, you would think if a Christian group promised to come out and do something, mm -hmm. being men of God, they'd do that. Lying bastards. <laughs> Good point. Thank you. <laughs> if anybody was going to show up, it'd be the Christians. Yes. They used to fight lions. Now look at them. What? Well, they don't do anything. They're not no. trustworthy. Yes, you're right. Seems like we're leaving somebody else out. I think the Indians are last. What, Eddie? It's the last really big group that does tend to get out and get mad. Okay. Good. Yeah. And they're the ones that got twisted when A.W. was doing a rain dance because we hadn't had rain a couple of summers ago. Yeah. And I think his retarded buck tooth ass is Indian. Yeah. And they still jumped on him. Yeah. Even groups protesting that didn't, didn't even hear what he did right. heard about it and w they were offended by something that they heard about or read. And then they start sending letters to the station. I'm never watching your station again. They didn't even know what happened. They just knew they were, somebody said it happened and they're, they're going to write letters. Well, and suddenly, you know, they're up in arms. I mean, this has been going on for several years now, but the Atlanta Braves have been around for how long? Mm -hmm. And suddenly they've, they're upset that they're called mm -hmm. Braves or the Washington Redskins are called Redskins. Yeah. Okay, good. You're working on a game for uh, next week, Eddie? Yes. Okay. Indians won't protest. Oh, Dan held me up a sign. Mm -hmm. 
Dan doesn't think the Indians will protest. They're too drunk and lazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll do it. <laughs> you can forget the game, man. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> We're just getting warmed up. What is it? You're on air? Uh, yeah. I was calling for the Russ Martin show. Yes. What would you like to tell Russ? I, he was saying something about picking on different ethnic groups. Yes, yes. He missed one. Who did he miss? Lesbians. No, I think he picks on the lesbians, too. Oh, okay. Big fat dykes. <laughs> Are you one? No. Okay. No, no, no. All right, bye. All right, you ready? Sure. Okay. All right, 438, J.D. Ryan's on the new 105.3 FM Talk with News. Thank you, Russ. News brought to us this time by Denny's Restaurants. Uh, monkeys implanted with special electrodes moved a cursor on a computer screen just by thinking about it and learned to do it better with practice, according to new research. Experiment, uh, which was announced yesterday, could eventually lead to the development of better prosthetic limbs for amputees and might even offer a way for paralyzed patients to move again. The monkeys have been trained to play computer games first using their arms, in which they had to move virtual balls around in three-dimensional virtual space. And they, and they thought the uh, they, they moved the cursors just by thinking about by it? Thinking about it, yeah. Where they, they put the probes? Stick things in their head? Yeah. They say it doesn't hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> it says right here, the monkeys that felt no pain. We've decided. Yeah. Each tiny electrode is attached to a single neuron in the motor cortex, part of the brain where movement is controlled. They were fitted with 50 to 100 electrodes. And they did this with paralyzed monkeys? No. <laughs> paralyzed monkeys. Rhesus monkeys. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Kennedy cousin Michael Skakel was uh, convicted uh, today of beating Greenwich neighbor Martha Moxley to death back in 1975 when they were 15, a case that opened a window into a world of privilege and raised suspicion that his family ties had protected him over the years. Skakel, who's now 41, could get 10 years to life in prison for the murder. He was handcuffed and let off immediately. I'm surprised they convicted somebody after that long. Yeah, it was on Unsolved Mysteries a couple of years ago, I think that heightened interest in the case. I know, but just having enough evidence to convict him on something that's 25, 27 years old. Well, I think, I may be mistaken about this, but I think forensics finally caught up to the evidence that was obtained at the time. No. And, and I think the bonehead was running around to some of his friends bragging that he did it. Yeah. There was that, too. Is that enough to convict you, or were you have oh, to have... Yeah. An admission will do it every time. I mean, like, if I just told, you know, admitted to Dan that I whacked an ex-girlfriend? Yeah, that would be sufficient. Even if it's not under oath and it's not in front of any other witnesses, and Dan could just say, hey, he said he did it. Yeah, because technically it's hearsay because it's an out-of-court statement introduced for the truth of its, for the truth of the matter asserted. But what, it's really an exception to the hearsay rule because they, without going into a lot of evidence, yes, it's an admission against your interest, so it's considered to have a high degree of truthfulness. But they would also have to consider, like, Dan's motive behind saying all this. Well, yeah, and the fact that it was Dan. In other words, they take in the character of the person who makes the statement. Well, that goes to the weight of its of the evidence, not to whether or not it's admissible. I mean, they've also haven't they brought up in cases before where one convict admitted to somebody else in another cell, "Hey, I did this," and that right. guy ends up testifying in court. Absolutely, and that's admissible, and they they carry some weight. Yeah, it carries however much weight the jury chooses to give it. Now, obviously, if you're on the other side, you're going to say, "Hey, this is a guy that's a convict. He's not believable. You can't trust what he says." But again, the statement still comes in and short it. And it's all admissible. Yes, it is admissible. All right. Go ahead. Okay. At the Tri-County Mall in Springdale, Ohio, outside Cincinnati, mall security guards took a, took advantage of their lofty position in life, and they took a vacant store space, stocked it with pillows and blankets so they could pick up little mall rats and have sex with them there in the mall. Yeah. The head of security at the mall even uh, took one lady up on top of the area overlooking the food court and held her while shoppers were sipping their little orange Juliuses below. <laughs> at least one female security guard was even in on it, and it all was fun and games until 20-year-old Joseph Mayborg told a 15-year-old girl he'd ban her from the mall if she didn't sit down and watch him do himself. Yeah. He's got six months in jail, and the party's over. Dad Zooks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Very nice. Uh, despite her tragically broken arm, when owner Ryder bravely endured the pain and entered uh, the Beverly Hills courtroom yesterday for the resumption of her preliminary hearing on shoplifting charges. During yesterday's proceedings, a Saks security manager named Kenneth Evans testified that he found six anti-theft sensor tags that had been snipped from merchandise strategically hidden all over the store in the areas that she was walking. I thought that 
the reporters, when she was going in, mm -hmm. hit her in the left arm. That's the one she grabbed when they got hit, right? Right. Why is her right arm bandaged? Don't know. I don't know. I never saw that. I saw the news report where the camera guy came in, smacked her right. It looked like he hit her right on the elbow. Yeah, because she, she went, grabbed her arm. She went down up. like this to the left. Yeah. Went down and went, ow. And then looked back to her left to see who hit her. Mm -hmm. And then they hustled her into the courtroom. Right. Oh, he would make that mistake and fake it. It happens in movies all the time. Well, yeah, it's in movies. If her lawyer did that, he's the biggest. <laughs> she had a continuity error. Yeah. What, Eddie? What it was was she had broken her right arm mm -hmm. in a, doing a movie, and so they were trying to say that she rebroke that right arm. But she got hit on the left. But she got hit on the left, but they were saying that the force of them hitting her, and she hit her attorney with her right, so now it, the right's rebroken. But she grabbed her left arm with her right arm. If yeah. it was broken, that would have been... I'm just saying that's what the attorney said. She oh. She broke her right arm. Uh -huh. Nice cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> Don't look at me. I didn't say it. Yeah. Okay. Right, in addition to shoplifting, she's also charged with burglary, vandalism, and unlawful, unlawful possession of oxycodone. Well, if, her, her, if her lawyer's that stupid, she's going to get convicted. Yeah. Who's out in the lobby? I'll go check. Very nice. Chicks, move, Everett. <clears throat> Open the blinds and move. Look at the... Uh, who is that? Hello. I said Move! Yeah. Turn around. Ugh. I know. Great. They're dancers from someplace. Mm -hmm. They're from Silver City. They heard you talking about the cookbook and getting girls in the cookbook. <laughs> yes. No. So he brought girls, the guys from Silver City brought girls up here yes. to audition to be in the cookbook or calendar, whichever you decide to do. All right. So the, the next question is, they're still out in the lobby. Why? <laughs> well, we're in the middle of news. F news. <laughs> F news. F news. <laughs> Oh. So you want me to bring him in? Yes. Okay, I'll do that now. He was brought to us by the second anniversary party. Well, I thought you were done. You want me to finish? Yeah, go ahead. Hurry up while he's bringing him in. He was brought to us by the second anniversary party. Whatever. You, you missed it. What are they doing? You totally missed it. It's radio. How about you explain it to Texas me? Texas Motorplex. One of the chicks came up and had her breast pressed up against the oh, glass what? in the uh, conference room. It was really quiet. June 22nd, 3 to 10. Live bands, big toys, big drinks. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Anniversary party. I got to do this. The promo. Oh. And the buddy contest. Four and six o'clock. Listen for your name. Go to KYNG.com. Click on win cash for details. There it is. I'm J.D. Ryan on the Talk That Rocks, Texas. The new 105.3 FM. <laughs> More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. All right, let's do a quick check on traffic. Jonathan Dodge at the controls of the new 105.3 FM Talks, White Lightning. All righty, Russell. I had to get rid of your buddy. How come? Grow up. Woodrow puke? He puked in my chopper. I had to set him down. It's pretty disgusting. What did he throw up? What do you mean, what did he throw up? What color was it? The usual color. Huh? What were you expecting? Something uh. special? No, go ahead. All right, this report. Any chicken you. bones? What? <laughs> Any what? Nothing, go ahead. All right, this report brought to you by Expedia.com. They're making it easy to find the trip you're looking for. Expedia.com. Don't just travel. Travel right northbound 67 near Camp Wisdom. Watch out for delays from Wheatland Road. Due to an accident there, traffic is slow northbound. 75 Central just past Walnut Hill. Right center lane blocked due to a stall vehicle there. Another stall vehicle eastbound. What are Rogers on the ramp to southbound 945. That was blocked in the left lane. Southbound 935 at Empire Central. Left lane blocked with delays from Northwest Highway. Due to an accident there in the mid city. There's an accident westbound 920 in Bowen. That one causing a heavy delay. This report brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Too young to think about life insurance? Think again. Now's the time to talk to a Texas State Farm agent about affordable life insurance. Contact a State Farm agent today. That's traffic. I'm Jonathan Dodge. And the new 1053 FM. White. Thank you, Jonathan. KYG Dallas Fort Worth weather. Probably cloudy. Going to be about 67 for the low tonight. Sunny and near 90 tomorrow. We have 85 degrees currently at the Talk to Rocks, Texas. The new 105.3 FM Talk. All right, Eddie, you can go ahead and bring them in now. I just didn't want them in here during the break because you know they want to talk. Oh, yeah. 
From what I can tell, they're hot. Oh, yes. Very nice. Well, I have my glasses on, so I can't see all of them. There's one in a little schoolgirl dress. Is she really? Oh, oh. Damn. Oh, my. Damn. Damn. All right. All right. Hold on. Let me turn. I got to turn the mics off. Everybody shut up. Okay. I already had to hit the delay once and turn the mics off and explain the rules. What did you say? She said, don't, 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 don't say it again. Okay. What have we been drinking? Jack Daniels. Yeah. For Jack how, Daniels. how much did you have? Well, like a six time foam cup full. That, that's about it. That's yes. That's it. Yeah. And who's a little schoolgirl in the back? Schoolgirl? Where? Yeah. Oh, I'm Heather. I have the gift certificate for you guys. For what? For, well, it's for one of your listeners. Um, you yeah, who she looks like? She looks like, uh, who's Tom Cruise's ex wife? Nicole Kidman. Yeah. I love you too. Except you're cute. <laughs> She's doable. Um, you so get a day doable. pass from the VIP. Well, who is this for? Is this for me? It's for one of your listeners. Where's all listeners? You guys, you guys get passes too. For the listeners, where's mine? But well, you know, just oh, hold on your boots. Are you a listener? Okay. Come on. <laughs> I practice this. Give me a second. Here. All right. Okay. <laughs> you get dinner for two. I think I could pay attention a lot better if some cans were out. Like, hey, be a listener head. right now. You want to get a Sweetie, dance? I don't tell you how to dance. Shut up, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Ooh, I don't tell you what. When you. Oh, God. She looks. She's like a really young Nicole Kidman. Yeah. That My one's natural already hair color is red too. Funny enough. What's we? My natural hair color is red. Is it really? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, as I was saying, and one hundred dollars of Silver City money to be used on dances, drinks, or cigars. Mm -hmm. And you have to call prior to coming to reserve your space and talk to the manager about arrangements. That's and you guys lovely. all get them too. She's got the passes. We do. Where's mine? Uh, I, I, have have I actually got some passes. You have some too. too. They're in. They're in the panties. Well, let me, is that mine? No, I already have too much in my Who panties, so I couldn't hold any. Excuse, have... excuse me just a second. How drunk are they now? Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't see how much they were drinking. Uh, okay. Okay, sorry. I was just communicating with somebody in the other room. It's no big deal. Which card is mine? Well, who are you? <laughs> just, I'll tell you what, just give me give me all of them, man. I'll, I'll disperse them later. Let me, let me have it. Let me, let me have it. Eddie. Hi, sweetie. Do you have mine? Well, I'll just, you can come right over here. <laughs> J.D. Oh, J.D. Hi, J.D. You must be J.D. Why? J.D.'s cute. Look. Ooh! Oh. Now, see, yours was supposed to be for me. No, this is, this is mine right here. It's got my name on it. It's like mine came out of the pink panties. Yes. <laughs> mine smells fun. <laughs> Who doesn't have one? Who doesn't have one? Who needs a card? Dan. Dan, why don't you guys, you guys all go into Dan's studio, out the hall and right into here. He'll Dan. love that. One door Hi, down. Right here, one door, you two, door. and just go right in that door. Lock that so they don't come back oh, in. Okay. But they've got my card. Yes. <laughs> hey, Where is it? Oh, I see that. Keep them in there with you, Dan. Uh, I can't. It's a prize package. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, dear. I'll watch that later. Some of the hottest chicks I've seen in a long time. Oh, man, they are. Yike. Dumber than burnt sand. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> What's it? We had a little drink. I just want... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You have to stay in there with Dan. We're done in here. Oh, we are. I told you, don't let him back in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't, don't forget all your stuff. Thank you for everything, and we'll give this away later. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very attractive. Hot. Russ. No, what? Kidding. Russ. Uh, put them back in the lobby or something. Well, they could be in the lobby. Okay. But they're drunk and they're cussing and I can't have I uh, know. Well, then I can't have them in here. I am talking to. I can't talk to the listeners. I don't really care about you. <laughs> I know you don't care about me. Oh, they're so hot. Yeah, yeah especially that Nicole, the Nicole Kidman one. Yes. Oh, my yes. God. She could literally go out and make cash signing autographs in public. She mm -hmm. could. As Nicole Kidman. And the other two were tall and high. She's hotter. Yes, she is. She yeah. looks like a young one. Yeah, with bigger cans. All right, so, yeah, nice big fake ones. Mm. And if that didn't work out, neurosurgery is always a possibility. Find out. Shut up. Every, uh, open the door okay. and see when they're dancing. See if they're dancing tonight. So I can use my VIP thing. Don't bring them back in here. 
Are they? Yeah. Are we going out tonight? Yeah. What is today? Friday. Friday, Friday June seven. Yeah, this expires. Damn, these expire in like three years. Mm-hmm. So, so, so. Drinks. Yeah, you want to go? Absolutely. Sure. Dan, no. do you need to check with anybody? No. No, no, no. Dan, no. No, no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Call her right now and ask. Okay. Leave your mic on. I want to hear this. Well, it might take me a minute to reach That's you. okay. I don't mind. <laughs> Dan Lewis asking if they can go out tonight. Well, it's right at 5 o'clock. She's probably leaving her desk and may not have her cell phone on. Uh, of course. They're leaving. Are they leaving? Yeah. No, yeah, it's too bad. Never saw Cannage. Didn't I ask to see Cans? Yes. Did you? But yeah. They got, they got, they're very easily distracted by shiny objects. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm getting her voicemail. Yeah, don't don't leave a message. Don't, don't, don't. I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to try her cell phone. Oh, okay. Put that one in the little schoolgirl thing. I, she was in the hall making a phone call when I went to the bathroom. Right. Took my breath away. Okay, yeah. what is it? Just go. Cool. Nope. Got voicemail on both of them. I'll have to try her again. Yeah. That's okay. We have plenty of time. Eddie, you're not going to go, are you? No. It's not because your wife won't let you go. I just don't go. Yeah. Eddie's not into that stuff. Hmm. He claims not to look at pornography. I'm trying to imagine a world like that. Yeah. A world without yeah. pictures of naked women. You never look at naked stuff on the internet? Movie stars. And that's it? That's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. So naked movie stars is okay, and just normal women you have no interest in? No, I just don't do anything for them. Mm. Well, I can, I, can, I can see that. I can't. Mm -mm. Well, no, you... He wants to see famous people naked. I like famous to see naked, women naked. Naked people naked. Those are my favorites. <laughs> Hot naked people naked. Yes. That's all it takes for me. I guess I'm a lot easier to satisfy. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, you're up. Yeah. I uh been married for about five years. I haven't seen any poon tang for like three. Yes. And that passed. This, this certificate. <laughs> Hold on just a second. This is really going to be too easy. Yeah. This certificate is for uh, two people. So do you know somebody else? Oh, oh, God, yeah. Because this is dinner spouse. for two and a hundred dollars in Silver City money, and you can use that for whatever you want. So do you oh, know? Oh yeah, my, my brother-in-law, he's been married for three. Really? And uh, both the girls, they both get together and laugh about how they haven't given us any. Right. And uh, it's, it's it's terrible. It's so you both you guys could use this then, right? Yeah. I think I know what's coming next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Like I said, that one was going to be too easy. Yeah. yeah, you could tell with the little light bulb came on over his head. Right. Uh oh. It's like God. being at the lake and the fish jumps out and hops in your car. <laughs> ah, screw it. It's going to happen anyway. Yeah, here comes the anvil. Here's a knife. <laughs> yeah. God, can you imagine being married five years and not having sex in three? Oh, and, and not strangling her? And if the chicks are, are getting together laughing... Because I've seen married women do that before, I and I just thought it was a joke. How they would, you know, make jokes about, I haven't given it to my husband mm -hmm. in X amount of months. Well, a friend of mine, a little older than me, was married. Wife, The wife got together with the other wives in the neighborhood, and they thought it was funny. They, they laughed literally with the guys in the room that they weren't giving them, giving them any sex. There's a cure for that. Well, a very good friend of mine's wife didn't give it to him for 18 years. And he stayed married to her? He's, it was a religious thing, but yeah, they didn't believe in divorce, but they had, they procreated one time. She bore him a son. She did her wifely duty, and that was it. She gave him an heir. That's all they got. And did he claim he didn't bang anybody outside the marriage? Yeah. Then he was, I didn't believe him. He was screwing mud holes in. <laughs> yeah. I, I would get horny enough to go outside and water the backyard and <laughs> dig a hole and stick my crank in it and just pray for gophers. <laughs> Mark that. <laughs> go ahead. You're on the air. I couldn't, I can't stay with a chick for 18 months and she's given me sex. Yeah. I can't imagine 18 years and, uh, being, uh, and have her literally look at you and laugh and go, right. You're not getting it. Uh-huh. Go ahead, you're on the air. 
Hey, I get laid all the time. I see all the nanny I want. Good for you. Hello? Uh, is this K1NG? Yes. What do you got to do for that uh, Silver City packet? I don't know. We haven't decided yet. They just, uh, I, didn't know they, I didn't know they were coming up with it. Uh, nope. uh, all right, thanks. What do we got to play today, Eddie? Pluck his mic back in, would you, Chase? Uh, what was the, the game we just played? The, the dumbest F? Stupidest F? Yeah. Chloe gave me but, a bunch of questions to give to you. But that's not for the listeners, though. Oh. Uh, we have ass word. I'm going to play the stupidest F again. Okay. We could play four listeners. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Does that still work, though? But the concept... have them vote off somebody. That makes more sense. Yeah, I have the listeners vote off somebody. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because if we blow it by the end of the, the third round, nobody wins anything. Right. Okay. That'll work. What a time. And we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll do that. Go ahead, Corey. You're on the air. Nobody wins anything. Corey. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how you doing? Good. Okay, good. Well, I just want to let you know I'm getting married in about an hour and a half, and y'all are scaring the hell out of me. Yeah. I like, first of all, turn the radio down. Oh, all right. Hang on here. We're driving to the, to the chapel as we speak. How long, you know the, uh, how long have you known her? Uh, about a year and a half. We've lived together about a year and a half. So you moved right in as soon as you met her? What's that? You moved right in with her as soon as you met her? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. How long did you... You met her, right? Oh, yeah. And then how long before you moved in together? Oh, six months or so. All right, so you've known each other for two years. Uh, give or take a little bit, yes. All right. What made you decide? How old are you? I'm 25. How old is she? She's 33. Hmm. That's about average. Well, I don't mean the ages, but I think now more people are getting married around 30. Yeah. They used to get married. My mom was married when she was 20. Now, I can't imagine anybody doing that. Mm -mm. Why this one, Corey? Um, she just feels like the right one. She's the right one for me. Mm. All right, I don't have anything funny to say to you. <laughs> no way. Basically, you're doing it to yourself. <laughs> for a little while last night, or uh, yesterday, I'm thinking, Donna Mills. Oh, you weren't here yesterday ever for yeah. that, were you? Donna Mills was in the studio, the chick from Knott's Landing. Oh, no kidding. Hot blonde. Yeah. How'd that go? It was good. Was it? Yeah. You know how old she is? How old? Do we have a... Nobody's got a picture left from yesterday, right? No. Um, yeah. Look at this picture. In this picture, in person, she looks this good. Just hold up anything and pretend like you're holding up something. Every day. <laughs> wow. All right. Now, I guess... And seriously, when she came in the studio, she looked like that. Not slanting. I'd have to say she's got to be at least forty-five. She's sixty. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I showed that picture to friends last night, and they all went, "There's no way, no way that she's sixty. She's just, I, I she's went, too I, good looking." I got on the internet and dug around to see, and every time I found any bio on her, it was some date in 1942. That's sixty, right? Yeah. That's a sixty-year-old chick I'd bang. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Still plays tennis, runs around, had nice legs. We don't know about her cans because the bitch won't show anybody. Never had a kid. Adopted one about seven years ago, so as good as a body can be for being 60. Sure. Just kind of makes you wonder, though, why 60 years old, never married? Yeah. Career woman. Plus, really. Wow. She's really hot. Yeah. In Hollywood. I'm know. thinking lesbian. No. I don't know. But that's what I would think. Wouldn't you? 60 years, never married? never married? It is odd for a heterosexual woman who's really attractive never to marry. I mean, it doesn't usually happen that way. I would. That's a 60-year-old. I don't care. I'd even call her nanny while I'm banging her. <laughs> <laughs> She's smacking around the house, breaking hips left and right. <laughs> she was beautiful, man. Her skin was just perfect. Yeah. Amazing. We're thinking maybe facelift, but yeah. she didn't have the old woman neck like old chicks get. Yeah, that's impossible to cover up, I think, with plastic surgery. Right. Normally you get the face, but the neck still rots. Yeah. Who's your meat mall? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I would. Uh, <laughs> who's your meat mall? Yeah. <laughs> you might think of a different line. I, I bet that snatch smells like gold metal baking flour. Is that good? I like cookies or something. Oh, I'm trying to think of something grandma-ish. Cookies, I like. We need a break, Eddie. Yes. Hey. Right. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, you going to play that game? Yeah. Can I be in? Sure. Thanks. All right. Bye. <laughs>
All right. Well, you know, we're we're talking about playing the stupidest F, right? Yeah. That's all we. Oh, I should have given it to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? No, guy called in and said, "I'll play the game, but I can guarantee you, I can kick Russ's ass on Rock and Roll Jeopardy any day of the week." Yeah. I said, well, we're not playing that. We're playing the dumbest deaf, and you win. Yeah. Let him go. That's all they're calling. Oh, okay. All right, then we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll do the stupidest deaf, and then uh, here's uh, Jay to give that to Dan so I don't lose that. That's just such a picket from Silver City. Okay. Thank you. That was very kind of them to bring the chicks up. Yes, it was. It was very, very attractive young lady. Yes, they were. I just get nervous when I'm completely surrounded by women like that. Well, especially since they're not normally in a studio, so yeah. they don't really know what you can get away with and what you can't, and... The first one wasn't in the studio eight seconds, and one of the words flopped <laughs> out. Yeah. And then another one, and then I had to shut off the mics because I'd eat up all the delay and go, can't hear the rules. Well, I just wanted them out of here because I got really bad gas today. I didn't want them in here. Just... Oh, I just heard that. <laughs> God. <laughs> Are you sitting in a tub? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> I just didn't want to do it in front of them. It's really embarrassing. All right. And they're bad, too. Okay. Thanks for sharing. How long before you call Laura to see if you can go out tonight? I'll try her again in just a minute. I just tried her. Ten minutes. All right. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. All right, Dan, how are we doing this with the listeners on the phone? Uh, we will just, I've randomly assigned a name to each one of the four contestants. Yeah. Whichever one of us is left, that contestant wins. So they won't know who they're voting off. Or when they vote, since the listeners are going to vote us off, right? they may even vote off the person they're playing for and they don't know. Got it. All right. Who's on the hotline? Uh, Johnny from Operation Kindness. Okay. You may vote her off if you'd like. Yes, Johnny. Hey, Russ. How are we? I'm all right. How are you? Lovely. How are things at the shelter? Um, going pretty good. What do we need this week? Um, well, you know, one of your uh, listeners emailed you about donating his car to Operation Kindness. Yeah, can you do that? Yeah, absolutely. And he suggested we might want to let other people know about that. How does this work? Well, all folks have to do if they have a car in any condition, running or not, they can uh, call Charity Motors. At 972. Is this information on your website? Uh, we're getting it up there. I don't think it is yet. Okay. But right. 972 Charity. Got it. Or, or charitymotors.org. They're a nonprofit and they handle that for us and they just send us a check. So it's a. Uh, how do they decide what you get for the car? They go Blue Book? They um, they sell the car and then they give they take out the the fees for it, oh. but they send us a check for you know what's left. But that's you know at least like seventy percent or something. So all right, so they just take out administrative costs. Exactly, and they will provide a tax receipt right up front, mm. and you don't have to wait until it it actually sells. And uh, it saves us the hassle of we used to try to do this on our own of you know messing with titles and all that and just don't have the time to. But um, it's a great um, great way. Some folks want a re- uh, tax write off and we get the money. Are you done? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought she would put me on hold or something. No. Just going to see how much longer she was going to keep talking about it. <laughs> I stopped. I stopped. We have a car place that does this for it. Here's the phone number nine seventy two Charity. Mm-hmm. God, you're just testy today. I'm always I like that. I you beating up on Rob a while ago. And geez. Rob? Now Rob had it coming. I don't want to hear any letters about what the hell we're doing. I he just want to know which... about this. This is a neat deal. I want to know which police departments and fire departments confirmed, and that's it. Okay. I don't want any letters to go along with it. All right, uh, the website is operationkindness.org. The phone number is 972-418-PAUSE. Can I mention a couple animals real fast? Max, 10-month-old, cream-colored Lhasa Opso, 22 pounds. Yes or no? No. Go ahead, Lhasa excited. So what is it? A Lhasa Opso. Got it. People who are interested will know. He's 10-month-old. What do those look like? Dog. We also have German slipper. Shepherd. Have big dog. What do they look like? Fuzzy slipper. The Lhasa Opso? <laughs> yeah. Oh, those are, okay. Those are dog. Yip, yip dog, yeah. All they right. look like a Shih Tzu, but bigger. <laughs> Great big Shih Tzu. <laughs> Do you stare at your dogs when they take one? What? Everett, yeah, Everett's been talking about this. Even during the, the, one of the last breaks, he goes, you've never stared at Abby when she's taking a dump? No. They get embarrassed, don't they? They don't get embarrassed. They do. They look at you like... Sure they do. They sure look embarrassed. They deserve their privacy. They would do the same. Well, why are they crapping in the front yard? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but you're not That's looking. A good point. I don't think animals are into privacy. They're the same ones that'll pop that pink thing out at any time and start humping company. Oh, I don't know. When you pull up, you pull up at a stoplight and there's a dog off to the curb, and he, everybody stops and they're all looking. The dog turns and looks over his shoulder like. Can y'all not look? <laughs> this is embarrassing. They get really sensitive. They don't. Yeah. If you stared at your dog, regardless of what they were doing, <laughs> they would turn away. Dogs are that way. It's that's, got nothing to do with the fact they're taking a crap. That's not true because when I walk my dogs <laughs> and they start to take a dump, I'll look at them and say, it's okay. It's okay to try and encourage them not to look embarrassed. And it doesn't help at all. They still <laughs> very embarrassed. That's because they're dogs and they don't understand what you're saying. Well, uh, yeah, they, that's not it. <laughs> Is Dan drinking? No. All right. Maybe I'm just in a bad mood. Mm. Mm. Biking. I'm all clogged up from the biking. I only took one and a half, and my butt's clogged. And don't nobody stare at me when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> I promise I won't. Do you like Dan did last night? Eat a head of lettuce. It'll clear you right out. What did you eat a head of lettuce for? It was getting late, and I wanted something crunchy. Laura touched all the rest of his food. <laughs> and I was feeling uh, peckish and wanted something to eat. And you ate a head of lettuce? I didn't mean to eat the entire head of lettuce, but I wanted well, some crunchy. Well, was it an accident? You slipped and fall on it? <laughs> no. I was just feeling I wanted something crunchy. And I didn't want to eat chips or anything. Did you eat anything with it? No, I just picked up the head of lettuce and just sat, sat on the computer and ate it. And you ate lettuce? Mm-hmm. Did you have some it's sand? Not, it's not bad for just snacking on it. All right. Did you that give diet's a, getting too damn. Yeah. Do we we do everything we need to do for we you? We did. Time? Okay. Thank have a, you. Have weekend. a great weekend. All right. Bye. Is that what it gave you? The farts? You got the That's lettuce farts? That's why I got the pooties. It's just lettuce farts. When you go to the bathroom, you're leaving little bitty pebbles? <laughs> little pebbles? <laughs> like a rabbit. Rabbit no, pebbles. Not pellets. No. All right. <laughs> All right. Can we go now? We don't have to break before we do this, right? No, we're okay. All right. Here we go. Hi, Dan. What are we playing for today on the Dumbest F? We have an especially huge prize pack now with the addition of the Silver City Cabaret Guest Certificate that's good for dinner for two and $100 in Silver City money. We also have a domestic disturbance prize pack, including a personal radio, a T-shirt, free showing of the movie, a $40 guest certificate to ProFlowers.com, a free Mystic Tan from Mystic Tan, free lunch from Tony Roma's, free admission to Frank's Wildlife Park, a KYNG 105.3 FM T-shirt, and much, much more. We'll also throw in a pair of tickets to the 105.3 second anniversary party. You should throw in Woodrow to clean it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of additions. I got to bitching to Rob about not having a bunch of stuff to give away. Yeah. Kicked in. Must have worked. What are you writing down, Eddie? <laughs> yeah, Eddie's right. <laughs> the listeners, let's keep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me get the contestants on the phone. Chris, welcome to the show. What do you do for a living? Um, engineer. All right. And what about you, Quentin? What do you do? I'm in sales. All right. And Tony? Hi, I'm here. I'm a tractor. Good enough. And Jason? I'm a mailman. All right. Everybody, welcome to the show. Everyone ready? Yeah. Get ready as we play. That's the wrong button. The stupidest. Thank you. All right. How'd we do this last time, Eddie? I forgot. Uh, what was it? Four questions each. Okay. Four questions for everybody. Yes. Right. All right. First round. Dan, we'll start with you. Oh, joy. Here we go. What antidepressant was originally used to treat PMS? No idea. Prozac. JD? Yes. Before acting on ER, he was in Revenge of the Nerds. Don't know. Anthony Edwards. Is he really? Mm hmm. Is it four, Eddie? Four. And There's then two. the game's over, right? Yep. There's two. All right. Everett. Yes. Vincente Fox was a Coca-Cola executive before becoming president of what country? <laughs> I'm 
Mexico? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm behind you doing the hat dance. <laughs> yeah. uh, Eddie, what futuristic movie starring John Travolta was called the worst movie in living memory by Time Magazine? Oh, it's like a Battle Station Earth. Close enough. Battlefield Earth. Dan. It was founded as a Mormon country before becoming a state. Oh, God. Uh, Utah. Yes. Easy. J.D. What Manhattan skyscraper once sported a car showroom in the lobby? The Empire State Building. Chrysler Building. Did we do missed six last time? Four questions each. Yeah, we do six. Miss the first six. Round? Miss was it miss six? Miss yeah. six? Yeah. I remember four questions each, but okay. Yeah, it was right. miss six, then miss five on the second. All right. Everett, what pop star owned fifty thousand dollars worth of eyeglasses? Elton John. Yes. Eddie, who played John Shaft, nephew to the original Shaft? Black actor. While you're deciding, could I have a drink of your tasty beverage? Oh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to stretch because once it's done, we're over. Yeah, you're screwed, yeah. All right, Dan, this one's yours. What blonde tennis siren predicted that in 10 years, every woman would play topless? I'm hoping it's Anna Kornikova. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> J.D., it was the world's largest freshwater ship that sank in the 1970s. A big, fat black woman also has a name very similar. There's a song. Big song. It's Gerald. <laughs> Edmund Fitzgerald. <laughs> Everett. A seance is held every Halloween to contact what famous escape artist? Harry Houdini. Yes. Eddie? What basketball player nicknamed the mailman became the third player to score over 30,000 points? Shaquille O'Neal. No. How many is that total we missed? Four. Four. All right. How many more am I asking? I forget. You keep uh, one more piece. All right. This is the last circle. Yes. Jerk. All right. Dan, what is the third planet from the sun? <laughs> Earth. JD. <laughs> I was like, where's the trick part? <laughs> Who jumped his motorcycle over a portion of the Grand Canyon? Evil Knievel. Yes. Also, his kid tried the same crap, too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did about as well. Everett, what form of cancer strikes the most kids under age 15? Leukemia! <laughs> yes. <laughs> he could have missed that. We should be okay. Leukemia. Yes. I'm mouthing it. Like... <laughs> All right, Eddie, last one. What tennis great of the 1960s had to quit baseball as a kid because it wasn't ladylike? Also went on to play Bobby Riggs in the 1970s. Uh, Billie Jean King. Yes. Made it. All right. We do the voting now? You want to do it now? Or when we come back? Should, we should do it when we come back. All right. Well, more of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. I think it's getting worse. Uh -huh. <laughs> Brought my lighter today. Yeah. <laughs> you should bring the smoke machine next I, time. I will. Monday, I'll bring the smoke machine in. Fog light. Uh, not fog lights. It's strobe lights. Strobe light. I have yeah. that, too. All right. Do we need to give the... Um, what's the tally, Eddie? Okay. Uh, Dan missed one. JD missed two. Everett missed none. And I missed one. All right. Now we'll go to the listeners and decide... Who gets voted off in the stupidest? 
All right, Chris, you're first up. Are you going to vote off? Chris, Yo. are you going to vote off? Well, let me look at that. Six stats here. Um, JD. JD's out. So far. Quentin? Yes. Who do you vote out? Eddie. Okay. Tony? Uh, Everett. Everett. Ooh, the smart one. And Jason? Oh, hang on. Jason, who are you voting out? Let's go JD. JD. Who is it? JD. All right. Thank you. As we now continue with the stupidest... All right, Dan, this one's yours. What 1988 Julia Roberts movie featured the screen debut of Ben Affleck? How many did we get wrong this time, Eddie? Uh, four. 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 Julia Roberts and Ben Affleck. Yes. I'm guessing Pretty Woman. No. Mystic Pizza. Oh, Everett. Who wrote the book, The Godfather, loosely based on his mother? Is his name Mario? Yes. Boot juice. Yes. <laughs> That's right, Mario Boot Juice. <laughs> Eddie? What required an unprecedented five spacewalks to get repaired in 1993? Um, the telescope thing. Which telescope? Hubble. Yes. Dan. Yes. What Keanu Reeves movie became the first million-selling DVD? The Matrix. Yes. Everett, what does the average human being do 15 times every minute? Breathe. Did this look like I was breathing going on this? I thought you had something in your eye. <laughs> blink what? is the correct yeah, answer. It must yeah. be blink. <laughs> <laughs> you think so, You thought you were just in love with him blinking. You know. Shut up, man. <laughs> What boxer told Le uh, Lennox Lewis that he wanted to eat his children? Mike Tyson. Yes. How many more times I go around? Uh, two more. Two more. All right. Dan, this one's yours. Judy Garland and Lenny Bruce have what in common with Elvis Presley? Oh, uh, they must have died on the crapper. Close enough. They all died in the bathroom. Okay. Everett, what six-letter suffix means the surgical removal of? Ectomy. Yes. Eddie, what product was inspired by Swanson's having ten railroad cars of frozen turkeys left from Thanksgiving? Swanson. TV dinner. Yes. I see pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Last uh, round in the circle. All right. What medium... Had over 14 million souls blathering Breaker Breaker and 10-4. Oh, the CB radio boom. Yes. Everett. What sacrament is smoked in one's conversion to Rastafarianism? Farianism. I would guess marijuana. Yes. Finally, Eddie. What does a chigger become when it grows up? <laughs> Come on, Eddie. <laughs> yes, a mite. <laughs> That's exactly right. What was the score? Who was keeping score this time? Oh, I was. <laughs> Dan missed one and Everett missed one. All right. We'll come back. We'll wrap this up a little bit quicker as we play <laughs> the stupidest. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right out. Five 
45, Dan Lewis is here, J.D. Ryan, Everett Newton, a rock and roll attorney, Eddie Boyd, studio audience. Oh, we vote one more person off, right, Eddie? Yes. All right. Let me go back to the listeners on the phone. Chris? Everett. You're voting Everett off. Quentin, who do you vote? Dan. Dan? Tony? Everett. And Jason? Everett. Wow. Bye now. <laughs> Bye. All right, so it's between uh, Eddie and Dan. As we play the last and very quick round of the stupidest. All right, here we go. Dan, this one's yours. All right. We're going to do four or just two questions? Three, whatever. I haven't decided yet. Okay. My ass is clogged up, so I'm distracted right now. The city of Naples is in what country? Italy. Yes. Eddie. What was Robinson Caruso's only friend's name? Um, Friday. Yeah. Daniel, what were the robes ancient Romans wore? What were they called? Togas. Yes. Eddie, the Chinese panda's main diet consists of what? They also beat you with these. Uh, bamboo. Yes. <laughs> Not the pandas, but the <laughs> From what city did King Solomon rule the king kingdom of Israel? Oh, boy. <laughs> Jerusalem? Yes. <laughs> Eddie, what movie star created the role of... Hey, I just tooted. That's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right. It's dangerous, though. Don't want to open the floodgates too soon. Yeah, you're right. Uh oh. <laughs> Squinchy. Feels like a little pencil came out. Wet <laughs> poisoning. Uh, did I ask you the Rocky Balboa one yet? No. Oh. What movie star created the role of Rocky Balboa? Um, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Daniel, who was president of the United States when World War II started? Started. Uh, oh. I can't think of it. Uh, Truman. Roosevelt. Okay. Eddie, what entertainer makes a wooden dummy appear to speak? Um... That's right, Russ Martin. <laughs> what is it? I, I know what they're called. I can't think of it. It's a weird name, though. Ventriloquist. Yes. <laughs> a few more, we're done. <laughs> Wasn't that four already? What happens when the nerve endings of the mucous membrane of the nose become irritated? They form mucus when you sneeze. Yes. Eddie, what is a clogged oil gland full of pus usually called? <laughs> yes, Pugs and Kelly. Damn. <laughs> That's exactly what popped into my head. Huh? What is the name given to bee puke? Honey. Yes, Eddie. What country declared its independence from England in, in 1776? Uh, America. Yes. Dan, what candy comes in a plastic container whose head pops back? Pez. Yes. Eddie, what is the rounded home of an Eskimo called? Uh, igloo. Yes. That's enough I can't ask anymore. What's the score? Uh, Dan missed one and I missed none. All right. Who was uh, Eddie playing for, Dan? Eddie was playing for Chris. Well, then tell Chris what he's got. Congratulations, Chris. You have a huge prize pack. You win the gift certificate from Silver City Cabaret. Good for dinner for two and $100 in Silver City money. Also, a domestic disturbance prize pack, including a personal radio and T-shirt, a free showing of the movie, a $40 gift certificate to ProFlowers.com, a free Mystic Tan for Mystic Tan, free lunch from Tony Romas, free admission to Frank's Wildlife Park, a KYNG 105.3 T-shirt, and much more. We'll also throw in a pair of tickets to our second anniversary party. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. Is it something I'm not going to want to do? I, I can't remember. Is it your, uh, something? Somebody told me the, the other day that Ludwig's is going to call. 
Is he is he on the phone now, or we got to call him? Uh, I'm calling him back. All right, we'll find out what he wants really quick, and we'll see. Okay. Tell him not to cuss either. <laughs> or maybe find out what he wants. Maybe he's out of work. All the changes going on in the stars. Yeah. He called it being laid off, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He said he technically doesn't have a contract anyway. So yeah. They didn't renew my contract. That's getting fired, isn't it? Yes. I think so. I remember once on radio they didn't renew my contract and I quit going in. <laughs> no more checks. Yeah. It was freaky. Sending at home nothing to do. Yeah. That's fired. <laughs> yeah. Dan still talk to him about something. I'm just, I'm just waiting on the air. Put him on hold. Put him on hold. Put him on hold. Hold on. We've been set up. Oh, all right. What? Randy from the Big Apple called yeah. and said that Craig was trying to reach us and didn't have the hotline number. Right. And needed to speak to you desperately. Okay. So go ahead and pick up the phone and talk to Craig and find out what he wants. Oh. What is it, Craig? I'm on vacation here, and you guys still find a way to bother me. <laughs> How do you do it, Russ? All right, what am I missing out of this story? <laughs> there what? is no story. I don't know. I'm up here in northern Wisconsin. It's about 75, no humidity, and I'm golfing. And you're on the course right now? I swear to God. Well, actually, I'm sitting on the patio right now. All right, I'm missing it. Why did somebody call and say, was this just to bother Craig? I think Probably, so. I'm sure it's somebody in your office, Russ. No, no, it wasn't. No, it was, it was Randy. Randy from the Apple. <laughs> I you guess. guys are the best, aren't you? <laughs> and then I'm still missing a part of the story. Is Randy just doing it so we'll call and bother Craig? I guess. Yes. Ah, you guys are killing me. I can't even get away from you guys. Please, so, I'm unemployed. Okay, I'm looking for a job. So you, by the way, yes. You guys need somebody to clean your wires there or something like that, or what? See, I told you. Oh. You, said, you said you weren't fired from the stars. You went well. You know things. I'm are, not. What? Do you work for them anymore? Yes, I do. What do you do? I get. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> you just said you're unemployed. I'm in secretly fired. We don't call it that though. <laughs> what? What's your status with the Dallas Stars right now? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know what they want to call it. It's not. I can't give you a title. Come on. Are you still in the in the business in the administrative office? Well, I'm not on the ice, so I must be. Although they do have a janitorial uh, opening there. I thought you said the new people came in and went. We're going to restructure, and we don't know what your position is going to be. Yeah, but the new people are the same old people. I mean, you know, just because Mr. Ganey's not there doesn't mean that it's not. You know, it's all new people. They've all been trained and they've been around for a long time. So. You know, we still, there, there's still some very intelligent people hopefully running that organization. So, you know, still one of the top uh, top teams in the NHL to work for, I can give you that much. Do you or do you not still work for the Dallas Stars? Yes, sir, I do. All right. When do and, you go back in? Oh, we won't, I won't go back in until another three months, just like everybody else. All right. I know, well, you know, Russ, uh, some of us just don't have a day job like you and get paid I got millions it. of dollars and buy these big, huge houses and lots and everything else. Hold on a second. How does he know about the house? Now, you say it on the air. It yeah. was, yeah. I listen to your show every day. All right. When you coming about it. When you coming back to town? Uh, I'm going to be back on Sunday night. Actually, I'm thinking about flying back tomorrow because... I, Oh, they got a bunch of they got a bunch of uh, these bets kind of things going on at a, a certain club here about this fight that's so called going on tomorrow night. Oh, so, that's right. I know. So I, I think I need to get back there. And, Who do you go with on this one? Ah, uh, Jesus. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I don't know. And, and as much as I, I don't follow it a lot, but I follow a little bit. Who should win? I'm going with the, I'm going with the nut. Uh, and you know what? You and I are both going with the nut. The L Lennox should win, but. I'm going with the nut. I'm with you. I, I just think he's so out of control. The fact that they have to keep him medicated most of the time, it's just like let loose on, on an animal. I, hey, I, I'm with you. I, I totally agree. And I don't and care how much got, you work out. That's or... going. We got, we got all these little games that are going to go on. We got these little things we're going to, well, if I go back. So, yeah. But there's, but who, sir, who's JD going with? Because he's the only guy that really, I, I value his opinion in that no, studio there. Sorry. I'm going with Lennox. Yeah, every, uh, like I said, yeah, Russ, sorry. I'm with you. Everybody everybody in the studio is going with uh, Lennox Lewis. Eddie and I are uh, going with uh, Tyson. How about Dan? Dan, he's going with Le Lewis. Really? Yeah. 
I guess they think you know he's been working out more and he's got uh, he's better trained for it. I'm telling you, you can't discount being a nut. <laughs> Russ, is there any chance that you and I can watch it together? I'm going to put you on. I'm putting you on the line right here. Where did you want to watch it? Well, I'm going to watch. You know where I'm going to watch it at? Oh, okay. I got to watch it at the Big Apple for God's sake. Why do I feel like I just walked into a spot for the Big Apple? No, you didn't. Well, Russ, is that I'm a spot slap or am I going to be there? Though. All right. Yeah, or, or do you want to watch it at Baby Dolls? Uh, either way. We can go over to Silver City now that we got our VIP pass. I got great big TVs around here. Okay, big shot. Yeah. All right. Big shot. I'll call you. Oh, when are you getting into town? When are you going to come back? Tomorrow? I'll probably be back tomorrow by uh, about 6 o'clock. I'll, 6 call, I'll, I'll call and leave my uh, home number on your voicemail. I've already got it. Okay. Well, then call me at the house. Okay. All right. Okay, Craig Ludwig from the Dallas Stars, whatever. All right, what's the story? I have no idea. That's apparently Randy being trying to be cute. Did he call in on the hotline? No. He called in a request line. On a request line, I picked up, and I know his voice. I've talked to him many times. Yeah. And he said, it, he said Craig needs to talk to you right away. He's been trying to get a hold of Russ, and he, uh, he, he's only got his cell phone. He doesn't have the hotline phone number. And I was like, well, you know, Craig's called in all the time. I'll call him and find out what's going on. All right, on. the Big Apple, the Red Apple. What is it called? The Big Apple. They don't get any more free plugs on this station. I know exactly what he's doing. Get Ludwig, Ludwig on. Ludwig's going to go, hey, I'm watching the fight tomorrow at the blah, blah, blah. That's exactly what he does. And now I'm pissed off. We'll make him bring food up. No, nah, that's not going to do any good. Okay. Seriously, that's pissing me off now. Because you know exactly why he did it. <laughs> We want to talk to Ludwig. Ludwig knows how to get a hold of me. All right, well, then is you ready? Absolutely. Straight up 6 o'clock at KYNG, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. J.D. Rhymes on the new 105.3 FM Talk with news. Thank you, Russ. A bus in uh, Carthage, Missouri, plunged through a stone wall of a bridge yesterday, fell 28 feet, crashing through the roof of a building that's used to store mattresses. <laughs> No one was injured on the bus. The bus driver, Charles Stortz, was charged with careless and imprudent driving. A uh, North Texas woman charged with murder in the uh, in her 10-year-old autistic son slashing death would sometimes drug the boy into a stupor. Uh, police accused Melanie Rochelle Dixon of severing the jugular vein and tendons of um, uh, Mitchell Dixon, then crashing her car into a ravine to make it appear like it was an accident. Uh, friends say there were no signs, there were signs rather of physical abuse at the Dixon household in Garland and that the boy was not fed properly. Other times he was allowed to run around outside naked. The owner of a New York bar whose strippers committed quote unquote lewd acts of prostitution was fined over $9,000 in a landmark case yesterday. Romeo Caringi, I believe is, uh, convicted last month of keeping a common body house at the now-closed Diamond Dolls, where his exotic dancers thrust their breasts into the face of clothed patrons, according to the judge. Uh, attorney Calvin Barry... But these, these were patrons inside the topless bar. Correct. Okay. Uh, attorney Calvin Barry said the judge's decision, quote, expands that definition of acts of prostitution by lap dancers. You don't need sexual intercourse or masturbation or fellatio uh, being performed to be considered an act of prostitution. So what now? It's it's going to get to the point where if you look at them funny? Well, he says they thrust their breasts into the face. They're in a topless bar. Uh -huh. What do you think happens in a topless bar? Uh -huh. Breasts become thrusted. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do. But I know, but now this is set a, this is set a, a precedent. Well, in Texas, that's considered public lewdness. I mean, there's this but it's in a bar. Well, I, it's in a private bar Well, that, where you get to run around naked. Right. But I'm saying... That offense in Texas would be considered public lewdness. Even in a topless bar. E oh, that's where Vice goes to make public lewdness cases all the time. You ra you rarely see a public lewdness. Now, wait a minute. Is there contact being made or just the breast being thrust in my direction? It just says here, thrust in their face of clothed patrons. All right, so does there have to be contact? Yes, for public lewdness. All right, so if they don't touch them with their breasts, they're just thrust in their direction. Correct. Then that's not public lewdness. Correct. You have to have contact. Yes. So once you brush someone's face with a, with a breast, you go to jail. Well, with the intent. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's what we're concerned about right now. If mm -hmm. breasts are touching people's faces. Mm -hmm. Dallas is very concerned with that. It's amazing because they send vice into topless bars around town. I don't get that. And pay them. Oh, yeah, they pay them all kinds of crap. To, to sit there and get drunk and get lap dances. And then they go to the manager of the club and say, what's the name of that girl and that girl and that girl? Get their IDs and then go 
to the Dallas County. Charges. File charges at large. The girls don't even know that they've picked up cases, and then they're driving around, or maybe they're dancing another night, and Vice comes in and IDs everyone. Oh, you've got a warrant. Dallas County Public Lewdness, you're coming to lose Sterrett. Oh, you're kidding. How Happens can you have a, how can you have a warrant for your arrest and not be notified? Well, because they don't arrest you at the scene. They go back to their office, file the case. Right. The warrant issues, and you've just got an, it's called an at-large filing. The warrant issues. I mean, the, the, nobody gets any kind of notice. Nobody like, gets Like any. if I were a dancer, say I'm a crank dancer. Right. <laughs> Hold on. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> say I'm a crank dancer, and something like that happens, and I never get anything in the mail. There's no communique to the, from the police to me. There's just a warrant for my arrest. Right. Why is that right? Well, it happens. I mean, I know it happens all the time, but why is it? It seems like there's a missing piece here someplace. Well, because any times I've got any time I've had a warrant for my arrest in the past for a ticket or whatever, I got something in the mail. Well, liken it to the Robert Blake scenario. They didn't send him a letter in the mail telling him there was an arrest warrant out for him. They went to his house and arrested him. That was murder. Well, but this is also a county charge. This is more serious than a traffic ticket. Uh, But there's no requirement. There's no requirement in the Texas Penal Code or the Code of Criminal Procedure that you receive some sort of notice that a case has been filed against you. Otherwise, it would create the ability for people to avoid answering to the charge. They could evade arrest, potentially. But I'm not defending it. I'm saying a better practice would be, obviously, to arrest them on the scene if that's, in fact... Right. Where you see them breaking a law. Yeah. But that's not what they do. They stay and they party and they go back to the office and they make these cases and... Uh, we're spending money on that. Oh, big, big money. Court time. Good. Jeez. I feel better now. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's really criminal what they do. Good. Okay, a lawyer for the Sacramento landlady convicted of killing three of her tenants and burying them in her backyard claims that there is no evidence that the deaths were homicide and has asked a federal judge to release her from prison, Dorothy Puente, whose yard and garden yielded seven buried bodies back in 1988, should have been prosecuted, according to to the lawyer, for fraud or theft, not for murder, even though the bodies were in her backyard. uh, But she didn't kill them, though, right? That's what the lawyer's trying to say. She She did kill them. Oh, she did? Yes. Oh. She had collected Social Security benefits owed to all seven men, and she never reported their deaths, tried to hide it. She's also had a criminal record of drugging people to steal from them. So she killed these guys and buried them in the backyard, and now the lawyer's trying to get her out. Uh, finally, 52-year-old Edward Hill of Norfolk, Virginia, uh, doesn't appear to be homeless. He does wonder. Hey, Norfolk. From- Norfolk. North, Norfolk, Virginia, yes. I think no, it's Norfolk. Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, doesn't appear to be homeless. He did get in an argument with his girlfriend then decided to cool down, take a little walk, and take a nap inside a dumpster. He slept until the next morning. Edward was picked up with the rest of the trash and thrown into a garbage truck. Could have easily killed, been killed. They even compacted him in there. He threw some stuff out, got the driver's attention. He's now in serious condition at the hospital. Don't sleep in dumpsters. All right, that's news brought to us by the second in, uh, second anniversary party at the Texas Motorplex in Ennis. It'll be Saturday, June 22nd from 3 until 10. Live bands, big toys, big drinks. It'll be a lot of fun. And, of course, Russ and, and the Ain't My Pie will be out there playing. Also, the buddy contest at 4 o'clock and again at 6 o'clock with the Russ. Listen to, uh, go to KYNG.com. You can win cash. Click on win cash for details. And I'm J.D. Ryan on the talk that rocks Texas, the new 105.3 FM talk. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. Well, let's do one more check on traffic. Jonathan Dodge at the controls of the new 105.3 FM Talks. White Lightning. Why, thank you, Russ, on this report brought to you by True Value. The Make Your Father's Day has Make Your Father's Day sale has everything he wants. Coastal Deluxe Folding Armchair is just 988 
Not at a great bargain of the month, only in true value. Not a whole lot of problems in Dallas, Fort Worth, just uh, northbound, 935. And solid cars from Rose Hill to North Loop 820. And that starts breaking up around Western Center Boulevard. That's just a minor matter, minor problem due to a small vehicle. And then rush hour, too many cars, not enough road. All that combined gives you a nice heavy delay. Keep in mind around the ballpark, Texas Rangers versus Atlanta tonight. So watch out for traffic problems there as well. This report brought to you by AutoZone. Is your car's check engine light on? Get to AutoZone for a free diagnostic test to find out what you can do about it. Get to Zone. AutoZone, that's traffic. I'm Jonathan Dodge in the new 1053 FM White. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, uh, party cloudy, 67 for the low tonight. Sunny, going to be hot tomorrow, almost 90. They say 89 officially. It's 85 degrees now at the talk that rocks Texas, the new 105.3 FM talk. Now, I don't know what you were holding before we went into break. What are they? Oh, is it S- S- yeah. SBI? What is it? SB. I don't know what those are. They are uh, basically sports awards. The ESPN 10th and uh, 10th annual SB awards. It's a. It's a, it's going to be on. When is it? July 10th. From the Kodak Theater in Hollywood. Are there a bunch of nominees? Yeah, and they're all sports people, though. We're not going to know too many of them. What are the categories? Things like best male athlete, best sports movie. Does it give you choices? Yes. Best moment, best game, best play, best male golfer. Yeah, we can go through a few of those. Best boxer. Well, things like best jockey. We're not going to know any of that. But it gives you names, right? Right. You just want to pick some? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it's always a big show because a bunch of stars show up for it. Uh, all right. Like Samuel, Samuel Samuel L. Jackson will host it. Lovely. Uh, let's go with best, and I'm not going to know some of these names, so I'll tell you ahead. Are any of them the great Franchitti? <laughs> Let me look. That would be under car driver, wouldn't it? Let me look car driver, see if he's on there. Whatever whatever he's under, that's who I want. Best driver. He's not on there. Ah, that's too bad. Mm-mm. There's other names I can mispronounce, though. All right. Best male athlete, Lance, Lance Armstrong, Barry Bonds, Shaquille O'Neal, Carl Sanderson, Tiger Woods. Best male athlete. Yeah. Do those again. Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Then he ride a bike. Yeah. Okay. Barry Bonds. Yeah. Baseball? Yes. Okay. Sha- Shaquille O'Neal. Basketball. Right. Yeah. Is it C A E L Sanderson? Kale? We don't know. You don't know. What does he do? I don't know. Don't care. Okay. <laughs> and Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods. I wonder what this is based on. You know, like how much money they made or their performance or. Mm. Yeah, it's like comparing apples to oranges. You've got golfers and pro basketball players. This is just general. All right, I'm going to go with Tiger Woods. All right. What do you want, Eddie? Uh, Barry Bonds. All right. Ed Everett? Shaquille O'Neal. All right, Dan's not paying attention, so give him whoever we don't know. The guy with the Sanderson. Yeah, give him that one. We're all betting $50, by the way. Okay. Dan, Dan too. Oh, all right, go ahead. Best female athlete. Jennifer Capriati. Okay. Sarah Hughes, uh-huh. Lisa, Lisa Leslie, yeah. uh, Annika Sorenstam, uh-huh. Venus Williams. I know that's tennis. I'm going with her. What do you want, Everett? Venus Williams. Do you know who it is? Yeah, she's a big black uh, tennis player. She's oh, is she black? black sister. Oh, yeah. I want her, too. Okay. Yeah. What do you want, Eddie? Uh, Sarah Hughes. Give Give Dan anybody. I'll take Venus Williams. Oh, Dan, have you seen the there? muscles on that woman? Yeah, she's a specimen. Is she? She is a an incredible sports icon. She is she, is she too firm? No, no, hot firm. Yeah, hot, hot firm. firm. Yeah, okay, right. That's what I like. Uh, best sports movie: Sixty One, Ali, Joe and Max, The Rookie, Monday Night Mayhem. I'll take Ali. What do you want, Eric? Still. Amazed that the longest yard isn't on there. I know, there's a lot of good sports movies. Uh, I'll go with Ali. Eddie? Uh, the Rookie. What do you want, Dan? 61. What is that? That was a movie about the uh, uh, home runs in a single season. Uh, okay. Best moment. Barry Bonds breaking Mark McGuire's home run record. Yeah. Luis Gonzalez base hit to win the 2001 World Series. Yeah. Sarah Hughes winning the gold in the Olympic figure skating. That's what she does. Or Dale Earnhardt Jr. winning the Pepsi 400, his first race at Daytona since his dad's death. I'm going to go with that one. Go on, Everett. Barry Bonds. Hey. 
I'll go with the Sarah Hughes thing. What did she do? She won the gold medal. She wasn't. She was heavily favored not to. Oh. and won it. What do you want, Daniel? Sarah Hughes. Give me the Aaron Hart thing too. Guy had the best game. I can know these. Ram and the Rams and the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Oh, that was a good one. Yay. <laughs> Yankees and Diamondbacks World Series Game Seven nail biter. Yeah, <laughs> women's long program Olympic figure skating. Edge of the seat. <laughs> Is it really? I'm going to go with the Super Bowl. What was the other one? Uh, Yankees Diamondbacks World Series Game Seven. Phew. Look at that. See, good spot. <laughs> Just saying it. Give me that one. Whatever that one is, I want that one. What do you want, Dan? I'll take the figure skating. Yes, for the hell of it. Yeah. What do you want, ever? Super Bowl. Eddie, I'll take the. Baseball. Oh, is that baseball? Yeah. Oh, take me off of that and put me on the other one. I didn't know it was baseball. <laughs> yeah, World Series Game 7 would be baseball. Yeah, take me off of that and give me the, the first one. For the Super Bowl? Football? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that was baseball. <laughs> they should put the name in there someplace. Yeah. 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 Good question. question. Well, it says Series. World Series. It doesn't say World Series for baseball. Well, World no. Series is baseball. I don't know that. Go ahead. <laughs> Best male golfer, Sergio Garcia, Phil Mickelson, David Toms or Tiger Woods? I got to go with Tiger. You ain't got no Chi-Chi? <laughs> no, I don't have Chi-Chi Rodriguez. <laughs> I don't have Chi-Chi Rodriguez. I don't think he plays anymore. I'm not sure. Uh. Phil Mickelson, Dave Toms, Tiger Woods, Sergio Garcia. Great train, Chitty? <laughs> no, there's no great. <laughs> All right, give me the Tiger Woods. I don't know who else you would go with in golf right now. No. Who do you want, Dan? Tiger Woods. He wants a Tiger. You want a Tiger? Now I'll take one of the others. Eddie wants one of the white ones. <laughs> Not me. I want the black one. All right. All right. You want Phil Mickelson? Yeah, that'd be fine. Right. Yeah. He wins, he wins a lot. All right. What All right, else right, we got? A few more golf. We don't care. Best boxer, Lennox Lewis, Vernon Forrest, Bernard Hopkins, or Floyd Mayweather Jr. <laughs> well, those, you got to go with. I'm going with Lewis anyway. I want Floyd. Floyd it is. I, I just play. want Floyd because of Floyd the Barber. Yeah. A Seville. <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's got to be some kind of takeoff on that someplace. <laughs> Floyd the Barber of Seville. Uh, let me cut your mouth. Uh, and there a song from Yeah. Me? Like what? Uh, I think, no, that's, never mind. All it's right. Mozart. There's to figure out. I'm thinking of something else, though. This could have had a really funny punchline had we worked this out ahead yeah. of time. Floyd the Barber of Seville. <laughs> well, Did you get Eddie? Not yet. No, Got Bernard me. Hopkins. Okay. All right. What's the, who were the... Lennox Lewis, oh. Vernon Forrest, oh, Bernard Hopkins. Lennox Lewis. That's fine. You don't want no Floyd? No, no Floyd All right. for me. And ever. I'd go with Lennox Lewis. That's plenty. All right. We don't know the rest of these. Well, we didn't know any of those. Best male college athlete. You're not going to know that. Uh, best action athlete. Yeah, do that one. Okay, Bob Bernquist, Kelly Clark, or Ricky Carmichael. I want Carmichael. Oh, of course. That's a shoe-in. <laughs> no, I think you're wrong. I'm going with Who do you think it is? I think it's Bob Bernquist. Of the action thing? Mm-hmm. Bernquist was burnt out years ago. He might as well have his own action figure. He's so popular. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Who are those guys? I, I have not idea. a clue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying from here on out. We're not going to know any of this. All right. We can take a stab at some of the other ones. How many are left? There's best male track athlete, best female soccer player, best male soccer player, best outdoor sports athlete. I like that because Jerry the Big Air Dog is on that one. Of which one? Best outdoor sports athlete. Yeah, let's do that one. We'll finish there. Rick, that sounds like a finisher. Rick yeah. Clun, Mel Lentz, Kevin Van Dam, or Jerry the Big Air Dog. I'm going guy with Jerry. What do you want, Everett? I want the dog. Eddie? Against the grain, I'll go with the Lentz guy. What do you want, Dan? Oh, I think the dog will get it, yeah. Give me the names again. It's Rick Clum, Mel Lentz, Kevin Van Dam, or Jerry the Big Air Dog. Give me the Van Dam guy. Those are your SB awards. All right, let me grab this and we'll break. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hey, I got a question. Maybe you can help me out. All right. I get girls, well, they come over to the house and we'll, like, pull around do our business and then they don't want to leave and i really don't know how to get them out there and still be in good graces with them 
I mean, last weekend I had one stay the entire weekend. I couldn't get her out. I didn't want to do that one time. Couldn't. I mean, did everything I could do to say, well, I got to go. Okay, I'll stay. You can stay here. Well, I'm just sitting on the couch for a while. The whole day. Didn't that just recently happen? No, that happened to me five years ago. Oh, maybe you just now told me the story. Could be. You sure it didn't happen a few weeks ago? Positive. I'm, I'm just, thinking. Yeah. I'm just trying to stay in good graces with him. We're just trying to get you in trouble. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I was like, huh? All right, when these chicks come over, do you know ahead of time they're coming? All right, you know, a lot of times I'll bring them back, or they may just stop by randomly, or we may just have a date, and sometimes they just stay. You need they to, won't leave. You need to always let them know you've got something else planned to do, either that night or the next day. Okay. I, I, and, you know, make it something family-wise so they can't go, oh, you'd rather spend time with them other than me. So, like, you got to take your mom to my mom. Right. You got to take your mom to the airport. You got to pick her up tonight and take her someplace else tomorrow, whatever. Just always have something to do. Now, that's not going to work every weekend because sooner or later they're going to figure that out. Or, or, do you have a pager? Do what? Do you have a pager? Uh, no, I just have a phone. Cell phone? Yes. It's not as good. Pager? Yeah, the the pager worked with me a little bit better because, like, if the chick is asleep in there, you just go in the other room, you page yourself, you probably got a minute or so to get back into bed before it goes off. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the pager and go, oh, no, that says 911. I got to call him. Yeah. Then you call and go, okay, I got to go. No. Then, but they're staying at his place. Well, you tell them they got to. I can choose when I send, like, I can send myself a text page and choose what time it goes out. Yeah, you can do that, too. And if they're, you know, you just, they, do any of these chicks have keys or? No, 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 no. All right, good. So when you get up and leave, they got to leave too. Right. Yeah. All right. That's what I would well, do. Well, that's been the problem with the one last week, and I got up and left, and she was just kind of laying around and didn't really want to go, and I was trying to hint, but I couldn't get her the hell out. But I didn't want to be mean about it. Yeah, that's what you do. Get a pager or use your text on the phone. Or, or have some kind of code worked out with your buddies where you call them and go, look, I need you to do this. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. All right. In fact, I just used that recently. Remember, ever? <laughs> yes, you did, Russ. Because I didn't. I didn't want to take L.A. to the to the airport. Yeah. <laughs> so I had, you didn't. Yeah. I, Twice. Yeah. I had Everett call, leave a message on, specifically while I was at work, and we knew L.A. was at home. Yes. At my house. Mm -hmm. Everett calls and leaves leaves a message. Uh, don't forget, we got to be in court tomorrow at noon. I'll pick you up about 11.45. Well, Ellie's flight left at like 12.30. So, obviously, I couldn't take her to the airport because she thought I was going to be in court. Nothing like that noon court to blow your plans. Yeah. That's cruel. Yeah. Now, had I just gone to her and said, hey, look, i got to be in court at noon, it looked like something I was making up. Mm -hmm. But ever calling and her hearing it coming in on the answering machine... Very nice. Lends it the air of authenticity. Yeah, and she got somebody else to take her to the airport. In fact, she didn't even bring it up. She goes, you know what, you're going to be busy tomorrow and stuff, you know, and I don't want to interrupt your uh, your your work day. I'll just get somebody else to take me to the airport. And it never even came up. I didn't even address going to court. Wait. So, so that one works, too. Yeah. In fact, Everett had to do it twice because she was supposed to leave on that Monday. Mm -hmm. So Everett calls Sunday, leaves the message. Well, she decides she's going to stay till Wednesday, so Everett had to do the phone call again Tuesday. And they're in court again. Yeah. Why are you going to court so much, Dad? <laughs> ah, it's just a uh, lunch burglar. I, <laughs> I don't know. But, I th but it worked. Yeah. I didn't want to drive all the way out to DFW in the middle of the day and come back, because from my house, that would have been a good hour and a half. Yes. And I don't have that in the middle of the day. And somebody took it to the airport. Mm -hmm. So that worked out. Perfect. That's good. Break, Edward. Please. Okay, good. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. I sent you, J.D., the link. Did I send it? Ever did I send you the link to the uh, the Down Syndrome dolls? Oh, no. <laughs> I sent Why it not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I ordered one. I almost fell out no, of my chair. No, you didn't. Did you really? Yeah. You really? <laughs> I had to. They got little dolls with, uh, 
I, they looked like Down syndrome kids. And after I left you the noon court messages. Yeah, I know. It's great. Somebody just sent me the link today. At first, I thought it was a hose job. It's re Isn't it real? Yes. And they show a couple of kids with Down syndrome holding little dolls. No, they don't. I swear, yes, I they swear do. to Jesus. It's, uh, hang on, I think of the website. It's a Downy. Is that right? Down I E D O D O W N I Dolls. Uh, yeah, I think it's no DownyCreations.com. Downy, yeah. yeah, DownyCreations.com. Yeah. Downy with an I. Right. It's a little Downy mm -hmm. from kids. <laughs> I'll Downy, market tonight. Downy dolls. Yeah. Yeah. It even shows how the ears are dropped, like <laughs> you know, a little bit lower on the head, and the eyes are more, you know, yeah, like this. You realize, of course, that's not at all funny. <laughs> well, then I shouldn't have sat at my desk and laughed. <laughs> I couldn't forward that link quick enough. <laughs> oh, God. Did you really order one? Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, I don't remember what I did. Because it wasn't... They didn't ask for a credit card. It was like COD. Well, they're not going to send something COD. It's what it said. I bet you don't get do, it. Do they all have all different kinds? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All different nationalities. Was it really COD? Yeah, because then was, it may be a hose job. Uh, Nobody ships COD anymore. I didn't. I just spilled out the thing. I didn't even know if that's still possible. Do they still do cash on delivery? I haven't seen it in years. I, yeah, I've ordered stuff COD before. Really? Just recently. Go ahead, Terry. You're on the air. Hey, Mister Martin. Yes. Hey, man. I got to ask this question. Okay. I don't know if it, what I heard was correct or not. Mm -hmm. But you. Did you stick a carrot in your butt last night? Or what? What's up with that? That's what you said. No, that's not what I said. Someone else stuck one in here. Not last night. No, it happened last night. You said it last night. Are you doing that Roger the Rabbit freaky <laughs> stuff again? <laughs> Damn. A carrot. <laughs> Was it a baby carrot or one of those real thick fat ones? <laughs> You know, first of all, I was on medication yesterday. And hey, I don't, hey, hey, hey. I don't think that's a question, brother. I don't think that's fair to throw that back in your brother's face. Come on, man. Answer the question. Was it a real small baby care or one of those big, fat, big ones? You know, the one you see that's kind of generic. The one that Bugs Bunny was digging through. I <laughs> found, the, you know, the four-leaf clover, all that. Which one was it? <laughs> It's been a long time. I really don't think I remember. Well, hey, man, what kind of protest you want? It was a big one, wasn't it? I don't remember if it was a big one. Did you go at it from the husk end or the pointy side? <laughs> I start off with the pointy side. Work your way up, right? Work your way up to the husk. First of all, this was a long, long time ago. So I really don't know, and I didn't do it myself. A girl I was dating at the time did it. And you didn't feel it? I feel it. Man, you should have turned around. And you know, That's a damn job. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing back there? You ain't got permission going in there. Come on, Russ. Come on. Just go on and tell us. A little gay thing was going on? No, it wasn't a gay thing. That's what she wanted to do a finger, and her fingers are too big. And he said, I know. We'll try a carrot. That was her idea. She goes, what about a carrot? Yeah, right. It was cold. I made her heat it up under a lot, hot water. Uh... All, all I say, and something something's really gross. Yeah. Afterwards, you didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. No. Okay. <laughs> but you go to look in the trash can, right? And there it is with the end of it. Oh, oh God! The pointy end of the husk end. The pointy. All of it. Oh. Say, <laughs> hey, rough. What is Terry? Can I just make this statement? I just heard you know talking about protests. Yeah. You know what kind of protest you need to start? Mm -mm. The myth protest. The what? The myth protest. The one that said that black men are packing and white men are lacking. Mm -hmm. You need to start that protest because all stereotypes and myths are not true. Yeah, well, I'm I for myself, you know. Yeah. Because on yeah. this end, that's very much true. Yeah. I was going to say, here's a black guy defending the fact that white people are hung. Right. Uh, no, I'm not defending it. Isn't it funny? Saying. You can say things that are uh, it's a stereotype, and if it's good, Nobody complains. No, no. All I'm just saying because they go, yeah, that's right. We are all hung. Yeah, but watermelon sucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, watermelon don't suck. Yeah. I got. We, we know that. You out of your mind? Yeah. <laughs> it was a joke. Uh, it's no joke. Don't be messing with watermelon. <laughs> Leave that alone. 
And if you really want some protest now, you might get your ass kicked if you do this. Yeah. But let's start talking about these sisters that don't, you know, clean the streets real good. No grooming issue. Oh, their snatch is uh, unkempt. Right, let's put it this way. They look like they got buckwheat in the sizzle lock, okay? Mm, I got it. And so, uh, Are you talking about you don't like all the hair or they don't keep it clean? They don't trim it right. You, you know how buckwheat looked back in the day, don't you? Yeah, I got it. I know what you're talking about. Now, For see, personally, I like, I like a big bush. I like it bushy, but let's trim it up a little bit, you know. You like it on the sides? Hey, let's trim it up. Mm. There's no reason to have hair that just poke you in the eye and just make you go blind. Yeah, you're right. You know, All right. trim it up and put some conditioner on it, some Afro sheen. It. Mm. Make it look nice. Got it. Yeah. All right. That's the kind of protest you need to get going. All right, I got it. <sighs> Does Vicodin make you irritable? It's an opiate. If you're coming off of it, it's going to make you irritable. Because I'm in a bad mood all day. Yes, you have. I don't think that's why. You're not helping. <laughs> well, I'm a great And I only took one and a half. I took one before I left the station last night. Mm -hmm. I figured it would hit me by about, by about the time I got home. I got home about two hours later. I took a half and went to bed. It's an opiate. I mean, it comes from the same derivative as cocaine, which they've shown in studies people give up sex and food for. I know, but I'm, it's not like I'm hooked on it. I just took one and a half. But I, I think your body still probably on some level wants more. <clears throat> there, there are people who get terribly addicted to Demerol, for example, in hospitals. Yeah. Even after just a few days. Yeah. Go through withdrawal and everything. Okay. Yes, Lauren? Hi. Yes. I want to know if you liked the carrot. Yeah, I want to know, too. Yeah. Why? Well, my husband gets all these magazines at home, stuff and Maxim and all this stuff, and it says in there that maybe you should try this out. And I'm going, hmm, Rush tried it. I wonder if my husband would like it. This chick had me try a bunch of different stuff, and that was just one of them. She was also the one that got me to try um, whippets. Oh, yeah. You would inhale uh, whatever that stuff is. What is it? C not CO2, but what it... Carbon. It's yeah, it's carbon. Whatever the propellant is that drives whipped cream out of the can, right? Right. She got. I didn't like that at all. One time, and that was the end of that. But the carrot thing you liked. Hey, but the carrot thing was just a. Uh... If you say yes, she's going to stick a carrot in her husband's. <laughs> yeah, I only. I wish she had a. I wish we had eggplant. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, the carrot was really small. I was hoping for an eggplant. Something really fill you up. Yeah. Well, I think a big cucumber. Yeah, it's huge. The bigger, the better. Cucumbers are really good because it's got really the bumps knobby. On. Yeah, that's got the bumps on it. Ribs for his pleasure. Your your boyfriend would like that. Well, is it something that you're going to try again? Absolutely. I'm going to go home and 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 <laughs> and see if I can get the whole refrigerator in my ass. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. All right. Go to the produce section of Kroger. He's like, going to wake up with Craftsman tools stuck in his butt. <laughs> Uh -oh. I like when women play around and then. And yeah. yeah. You don't want to say too much because then you sound gay. Yes. Too late. A chick did it. Not like it happened to me by accident in the men's room out at White Rock at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Again? Yeah. <laughs> Just for example. Oh, Lord. One line, Dan? Three? Yeah. Go ahead, Ken. You're on the air. Hey, Russ. Hmm? Messiah. Yeah. The one that talks about the gays and you let the girl put a carrot in your butt? <laughs> I've been a follower you since, man, like the eagle, and I, I can't believe you put a carrot in your butt. Ken, do you know where the male G-spot is? Yeah. Where is it? It's in, like, between the the butt and the... No. The... No. Mm -mm. no? It's, not in, it's not in between the butt and something else. Where is it at? It's in. It's in the butt? Yeah. That ain't a place for a carrot. <laughs> well, it's not really a place for a G spot either, but you know, things happen. And here's a cruel joke. Well, but Russ, you can't you can't be doing that, man. I haven't done it in a long time. Uh, yeah, you might mess up the sphincter. No, not really. No? No, you don't get a fresh one. Mm -hmm. well, hey man, I've been a, I I've you you let one here. set out for a while. It feels more like a penis. Oh, <laughs> 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 
If I don't like you so much, I'd make that the promo. <laughs> I know where he was going with that, yeah, and I'm yeah. not going to lie. I like it when chicks mess around in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, nobody else wants to admit it. They want to let me hang out on the lamp. That's fine. I'll admit it. I like that. I don't. It's one of the mess around. Uh, nothing uh, I'll go out on the other other limb on the third. same tree. <laughs> I don't. Vegetable byproducts is your focus. That's, what about it? Well, that's different than just kind of messing around. She wanted to do a finger. A finger was too big. I know. I know. What? How about a carrot? The carrot was small. Mm -hmm. it's well, a great I don't see a whole lot of carrots around that are slim and slender hey, well, like a woman's finger. <laughs> Most women's fingers are small and delicate. Will you she have ham hocks for a hand? No, I know who he's talking about. She did not. She had tiny hands. You know the carrot woman? I do know the carrot woman. Just most carrots you see in the grocery store are pretty big around. All right, it was a huge carrot. It was this big. It was the size of a trash can. <laughs> what if it gotten stuck? If she lost her grip on it and it <laughs> slipped away and your I think I, you know bottom what? sucked it up. You know what? I've gotten bigger things out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, I know. It's, it's getting hard. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll help you break, Eddie. <laughs> oh, Lord. God, it's not even 7 o'clock. Uh -oh. I thought I could milk that phone call for another 10 minutes. What is it? You're on the air. Yes, I want to know what kind of woman you're dating that's got fingers bigger than a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a point. <laughs> what? You got a point. It was a little bitty carrot. Okay. <laughs> it was about the size of this pen. A yeah. little bitty thin one. Never they use it like a... a Chinese food recipes. Like baby corn. Yeah. Ooh, baby corn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why don't you just stick a bunch of Chinese food in my butt? <laughs> you get doped up on the air one time, the carrot story slips out, now i got to deal with it for two days. It's a good one. Of course, nobody brings up the fact that I said I shoved a chair leg in my butt. Yeah. They let that one go. Yeah. Because that wasn't real. This carrot was real. <laughs> it really happened. Your leg in my butt, yeah. They let that one go. I don't want to hear that twice. <laughs> More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. Muscle relaxer wouldn't make me feel weird, would it? It might. What did they give me? A muscle relaxer or an anti-inflam? Anti-inflammatory is what they gave you. That won't do anything, will it? No. No, they didn't do anything to me. No. Oh. The uh, Vicodin made me feel a little loopy, so I quit taking it after a couple of days. Yeah. No. In fact, I only took one a day total for two days. All right. What's up, Doc? Yeah, what? Hey, I got a, two questions for you. Uh, one, how long did you actually accept the carrot into your butt? And do you still eat carrots, or do you have to court them first? It wasn't in there long. Long as in lengthwise or long as in time-wise? Either way. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. <laughs> that would be the story for the big parties all the weekend. Yes. And did you hear what Ross Martin did? I can just see with a plate of carrots in front of you. Gosh, it's so sudden. Oh, no. she. Uh, we, we went out to a great big um, station event, mm -hmm. and I was up on stage doing something. She had uh, the waitress bring me a plate of carrots. <laughs> Didn't say anything. Nobody got it but me. And, of course, I had already told J.D. by then. Right. So he knew exactly what she was doing. <laughs> can we leave yet, Eddie? No. How much longer we got to stay? Do short news? A couple stories we can get to. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You don't need the little sounder thing. Now, hold on. Let me see what this guy wants and we'll do, do a quick, just something to kill time. Go ahead, Bobby. Are y'all ready for a Dale Earnhardt right turn here, guys? Yeah, go ahead. 
you know, your bobblehead problem, I got it solved for you. All right. You are the great Rosiah. Just order the disciples not to buy any. The station will get stuck with every damn one of them. Nah, they'd buy them just to piss me off. No, no, we wouldn't do that. Yes, you would. Well, no. Well, then you, if we did that, you'd have to go back to doing West Coast Weekend, so we wouldn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just read whatever you got. A battle brewing over a beer vending machine in a fire station, actually. Uh, the machine is located in the Crescent Springs Fire Station. And this is near Cincinnati. Um, and volunteer firefighters pay for and stock it with beer. The machine has drawn criticism from members of the community who are concerned that firefighters may be drinking on duty. Firefighters have denied that they drink on duty. Then why do they have to have the machine? Of course, volunteer firefighter Donnie King said that firefighters who have been drinking beer do not respond to calls. He's gotten a lot older, but his wheels are a bit rustier. But former motorcycle daredevil Evil Knievel wants one last chance to show the world he can still jump motorcycles. The motorcycle rider who gained the notoriety jumping over rows of buses, trucks, and just about anything else in the 60s and 70s has led a quiet life the last couple of decades. Plans to return to the spotlight next year for a final fling as he jumps his mud. I thought he was dying or something. Yeah, but what's he going to jump? He doesn't say. He doesn't. Seems like I remember. Uh, isn't he opening up a new business? Yeah, he is. I can't remember what it is, though. I think the jump is going to be at his business or something like that. Uh -oh. Obviously, it's a big publicity thing for that, but I forget what it is. Look at him. He looks dead right there. What I read said he was going to jump, jump over 20 or 30 buses. Uh, this will be it. Yeah, it doesn't say in this story that J.D.'s got. And his, at his age, he will splinter. He'll just come apart. Yeah. yeah. He was doing commercials for uh, some kind of painkiller shock thingy a while back, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. The, whole thing the little plunger thing that right. you do, you know, wherever the pain was. Mm -hmm. What is it, Paul? Buddy, was it a situation where she put it in and took it out? Or did Let she put it in? Let the carrot thing go, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know if she spin it or something. Did she twirl it? <laughs> or was it just like an in and out thing? I mean, there's a difference there. Let me think, because it's been like 13 years. Let me think just for a second. <laughs> it was just in and out. Okay. So no twirling or anything like that? No. So she just jammed it in and jerked it out. Right. All right. Well, then that's all right, I guess. Okay. Good. Care to any other questions? If anybody has any other questions, now's the time. No, it's been pretty well discussed. And Everett. I didn't have Zales in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we're so talking I, about you right now. If I, if I were you, plus, off the air, you admitted there were like 12 or 13 and you got crammed oh, up Oh, now there. you're just embarrassed. Am I making it up? No. no. Thank you. Sorry. Back sheet. Back. <laughs> mm-mm. Mm-mm. Don't jump on somebody if, if when you're hiding the family jewels in your ass. <laughs> All right, carrot boy. Mm -hmm. uh, now? Yeah, we got two okay. plugs. I'll do plugs and leave? Yep. Oh, all right. You got the plugs ready then? I got them ready. All right, hold on. All right, let it rip. To learn more about the Russ Martin Show, to email anyone on the show, to get in the studio audience, to make a donation to the Lister Foundation, or to get on the show's weekly email list, simply go to RussMartin.com. To see the costumed antics of our own J.D. Ryan, go to JohnDavidRyan.com. Visit Eddie's oddly fascinating website, go to EddieBoyd.com. To contact Everett Newton at his law office, call him at 214-823-LAWS or go to DallasAttorney.com. To email us during the show and only during the show, use the Russ Martin Show at Hotmail.com. Thanks to Chipotle for bringing up today's food. Anything rolled this good can't be legal. For information about the rest of the station, go to KYNG.com. All right. See you guys Monday. Bye. Bye-bye.